Hey, welcome back to Metro All Grade. My name is Andre. Thanks so much for tuning in. It is December 5th, 2023, the day before me clouge. Hopefully your baskets are ready. St. Nicholas is among us. Who's ready to eat persimmon until our faces are numb? <laughs> um, for real though, does anybody celebrate that thing? I celebrate it. It's pretty sick. I'm really excited. Uh, it's St. Nicholas Day. You will get a basket. You full of put it full of clementines and and milk and chocolate. I couldn't ask for a better time of year. How's everyone doing? Hopefully you're doing well. It's a Tuesday uh, afternoon. We'll be streaming for a while. 19 days till Christmas. Is that what it is? 19 days, huh? That makes sense. Hanukkah's really early this year. It's in like two days, maybe? I think. Oh, my windows are all messed up. Give me one second. We're always really excited. And by we, I mean my mom. I'm excited too, but not as much as my mom is. Is that uh, our my brother-in-law is Jewish. He celebrates Hanukkah. And so, you know, when it overlaps, like last year, we're lighting a menorah and my mom, like every day, just like, when are we going to light the candles? Are we going to light the candles? Let me know when are we going to light the candles? And so she's running out and we're excited and we bet on what candle goes down. That's good fun. Your new video replay is incredible. What a great replay to review. Thank you, Ian. Yeah, it's a really good replay to review. Um, that's like sometimes a hard thing when it comes to replay reviews. Firstly, huge shout out to Chillstad. So we put up a video just uh, the other day. Uh, that is a replay review and it's about two hours. It's a bit long, uh, arguably maybe too long, but in short, we go through a video replay of, uh, I think a really good deck to play, uh, which is the sort of like fundamental Zaya deck that just has a lot of multi-axis and we break down the game and we go click by click, turn by turn and like try and question everything we're doing all the time, which is generally the sort of thing you should be doing if you want to improve in Netrunner. Um, so that's really good. Shout out to my partner who, uh, we were playing some Netrunner today and yesterday or sorry, yesterday and today. Yeah. Uh, to try and work cause we have a an upcoming CO on the weekend and she hasn't played for a while. So we're doing the same sort of Socratic process, which is always really fun. Uh, but in short, this like actual, the replay itself was really good. And that's not always the case. I know I've received a whole bunch of replays, uh, just even for this sort of uh, project. And like some of them, there's just less to learn than others. This one's really cool because it's a mis mix of like, Things that obviously aren't done perfectly, things that are done perfectly, uh, really good turning points where we can see like if we did this instead of this, this would have happened. And we have a lot of easy ways that we can kind of tell what's on the board state. And then just a lot of it really worked out very, very well. I think the note taking thing is incredibly important. Like it is just so good that taking notes or having strong memory. And again, if you're learning the game, just take notes. It's so much easier. Uh, it's a really nice thing. So check that video out if you have any feedback. We have a second part. There was a comment asking if we're going to do a corpse side. We definitely are going to do a corpse side um, video at some point. The two replays that I have, I'm really excited about. The second one coming up is still the Saya deck from Chill. Uh, I don't know. I think I have a couple other replays in my inbox. I received some that were like a bunch of, uh, I forget what runner it was. I think it was lat versus R plus. And like those replays can be really hard because if you just make one, this is my R plus problem right now is you make one bad run and then somebody reses for three credits uh, Starlit Knight and you take two tags on turn one. Game's over, y'all. <laughs> like it can be that bad. It can be really that bad. I'm like not an R plus fan. I honestly think R plus is kind of messed up because it totally reevaluates. Like imagine paying an Enigma to give the runner two tags. Huh? Anyways, sometimes they're easier than others. Yanis, how's it going? Is Andre building re-education to Jupestead combo? I don't think so. We played this like re-education deck once. We tried to play it twice on last week and we'll play it again on Thursday. Tuno's uh, re-education deck, I think it's actually pretty good. Like I think Neurospike is, as long as you're not playing into imp stuff, it's like relatively well positioned. And obviously Tuno, it did incredible at the, uh, what's it called? At the, uh, at the Italian Nationals. Let me catch up on chat. I haven't really gone through that. Hey David, always good to get back to early lunch to see the great playing some rubber. <laughs> oh, I'm glad to hear you're doing well, David. Uh, are you, uh, I, I'm doing good, too. Rosenheim, guten tag, how's it going? How's it going, everyone? I'm doing well. Skip on. Also, welcome. Alec, good morning. Eric, hey, hey. Yo, shoutouts to Neon Static. Uh, they put out two pieces that are pretty cool. Uh, the first one is something they should have had a long time ago. But in short, there's a card that came out that has a fun little name that nobody knows how to pronounce it. I've been saying, classically, Mavarushi. And uh, it's... It's a short video, but check it out. But in short, uh, Eric reached out to the person who discovered this thing and sent him an email and uh, Matthias responds and it's really funny to be like, hey, uh, you're right, cross stream chat is not working. Twitch, what's going on? Did Twitch stop restream? Did I lose my control? Sorry, I'm getting absolutely, yeah, you're right. You're totally right, Alec, it's not working. Elwin, how's it going? Good morning. I'll look at that for sure before Thursday. I thought it would have just worked. 
<laughs> Faith Cousin. I need to reevaluate. Anyways, check this out. We get definitive proof. And also just yesterday, last night. Um, what's his face? What is his face? Jeff? Uh, Jeff pop in to join uh, a live stream, which is really fun. I was laughing at Jeff uh, with Jeff um, at Worlds because Jeff was saying like, okay, because we were at dinner with Pat. And then I think Pat was saying like, how long does it take you to get to Andre's place to come stream on Thursdays? And for those who don't know, it's like 45 minutes. Like Pat lives across town and he has to take the public transport and then he has to walk a bit. And like, it's mind you, we have 30 centimeters of snow out. Like it is a bit of a thing. And then uh, Jeff was like, wait, that's probably how long it would take me to get to the neon static people. Turns out it takes him a bit longer because of traffic. But uh, it's really funny because I think he thought Pat lived next door. But Pat's a bit more hardcore, which is great. Um, anyway, check this out. It's great. Uh, they play through some meta decks. Uh, there's a bit more coaching. And I love, like, this is the one thing that people don't do in Netrunner. And, like, I've been doing this with my partner yesterday. We'll do it again today. Play open-handed. It's so much more fun. It's so much more interesting. Obviously, like, you have to not play it with the information you've gained. Uh, but that's, like, ex generally how I do lessons sort of stuff is, like, we play open-handed. And I know I've got really good feedback that specifically I'm pretty... I'm. I have this weird skill of playing open-handed, but playing as if I don't know the information. And that's because I've spent so much time uh, doing this sort of stuff or like uh, commentating that like compartmentalizing what information each player knows is something that maybe doesn't come too easy for for all. But uh, playing open-handed is so great so that I can sit across from someone and we can be like, OK, this is how do we open this hand? Why would we open this way? What do we think the runner is going to do? And then you play. And this is like pretty close to that where like Jeff, you know, chimes in uh, pretty consistently be like, why are we doing this for this reason? Getting better Netrunner is really cool. Let me catch up on chat. I side rail myself real hard there. And mind you, Neon Static is in chat. Say hi to Eric. Hey, Lucille. F fell asleep to Neon Static last night. Finished work too much work today. Life is good. Yo, you're stuck in a groundhog day. Ah! Good to hear things are good, Lucille. I see YouTube is once again confused as to what game it's playing. Alex, it always will say whatever it thinks it is, and it will update throughout whatever we say, whatever keywords. And then at the end of the stream, I usually change it to card games because Netrunner is not an option. Or if we play something specific, I'll do like a joke title if it lines up with it. But um, we're Valorant streaming. Yeah, it looks like it is. Ian, how's it going? Sophie. Yo, Sophie, how'd it go? Did you go to uh, PAX U? How was PAX U? Ah, uh, Leon, Leon says what Ian said yesterday. The video was so good. Thanks so much for the glad you appreciate it. Haven't finished it, but the first half of the video is really good. Hey, any feedback? Glad you're all liking it. We'll have another one coming out. On that note, too, in terms of like content on this channel, um, it is going to like slow down pretty heavily in the next couple weeks. We're out for about two weeks at the end of December because of holiday stuff. Um, I don't know if I'm going to have a bunch of stuff like queued up, but uh, we'll see how that goes. We'll cross our bridge when we get to it. But um, I'm worried that might be a bit quiet here until the new year after a couple weeks. Hey, Bob. Great job on the video. Thank you. Really awesome fundamentals aid for newer and not newer players. Glad to see you pop into stream last night too. Yeah, I was like plugged into the channel and then like I'm subscribed to you and it's like you're live. I'm like, okay, let's go check it out. We're going to be doing some deep dive stuff here tonight as well or today. But yeah, but streams on uh, Monday nights, at least in my time zone. I'm teaching my coworkers night to play Netrunner at our holiday party next week. I'm so excited to share this video with those that get generally interested in the game. Yo, Ian, that goes hardcore real hard. I don't know if that's the best like learning entry point. I think we're at the point where like Maybe it is. I don't know. But that's fantastic. I tried following along with note taking from what I've gone through so far since last night. And when the corp installed the hog and I knew it was my mind was blown. <laughs> Dragon guards in hand is OP. There's also like one thing is that's a weird board state because we 100% knew it was a hogging because the corporation literally didn't have any cards and or we knew every card. Uh, but there's even a lot of cases where like the corp top decks a hogging. They have five cards in hand. Next turn they install first click. Like you're pretty sure it's a hogging. That is another thing that we do pretty often when we play Nightrunner. We'll be like, we think that's a hogging. Uh, you have to watch out that you're not blown out. But like specifically on turn one, if the corporation drops three ice on the table or two ice on the table, they probably don't have another ice in hand. So whatever they top deck is likely to be in the next agenda on the table. Yeah, YouTube can see Twitch. Twitch can't see YouTube for some reason. Um, so that's unfortunate, which is really weird because if Twitch thinks like I'm, I'm going to avoid restream, they're like people are just going on YouTube because that's where everyone can see everyone. Sorry about that. Hey, Jai. Hey, friend. How's it going? Also, Kira, how's it going? Go to sleep, Jai. Fix the evening all. <laughs> no, you. Going to need full pronunciation guide from Neon Static for every set going forward. There's a lot of emails to send out, but NSG pronunciation guides are kind of my favorite thing. Thanks for shout outs. Very much appreciated. Yeah, totally. I didn't last, but Izzy did. Oh, I thought you did as well. Okay. Have you played the full release of RoboQuest? Uh, Seb, not only have I beat it, I have S-tiered it on the highest difficulty. <laughs> yeah. 
Okay, uh, Tuesday's a good day for Netrunner content. It really is. Okay, sorry, sorry, non-Netrunner, uh, non-Netrunner, um, what's it called, uh, Tangent. RoboQuest is a game that finally came out of early access on Steam. This is a game not like Netrunner. In no way is it like Neverrunner. A lot of times we'll say Neverrunner Jason games, but this is from a small studio and it is legitimately one of my favorite games of the last year and not because it is, you know, art or anything like that. It's just because mechanically in terms of it's like a roguelike shooter type of thing, uh, but the shooting is actually like amazingly good, like really, really, really good uh, because it's all movement based. There's no hit scan stuff. Mobility is really tight. All enemies have like critical spots and there's like multiple types of enemies. It's really good. It co-ops really well. You also like have a character and then every time you level up, you get a new tier. So you're like, you know, roguelite tier, like character creating. Uh, I've been playing this in early access for, I think, two years now, and it's been consistently a game anytime there's an update. It's also like my, my podcast game, so I'll end up listening to like an Arkham podcast while, you know, RoboQuest. Like I, last time I ground RoboQuest, I listened to like, I caught up all on Miskatonic University Radio, right? Like this is a really good game for that reason. And it came out in full access and the full access added more than I thought it would. It was a really, really nice update. Um, I have a code for this. I have an extra code that I've always wanted to like include if we do like an online tournament or something as like a raffle or a prize or something because I already own the game and I got one on Humble Bundle. So we'll do something with the code, but it's not very expensive. There's a demo apparently, check it out. Uh, it's 35 Canadian dollars. You can play co-op. Um, it's just like generally if you want a really nice arcadey shooter, uh, it's kind of stellar. It's it's just like way better than it ought to be. Yeah. And 3000 reviews, 96% positive. Like if you want to shoot a gun at a thing, you can't do worse than that. Um, it's really good. It's really, really good. Reminds me of Gunfire Reborn. Yeah, it's very much like Gunfire Reborn. I played Gunfire Reborn for maybe an hour or two and I didn't get too deep into it, but it's like the same sort of structure. But for me, Gunfire Reborn, the shooting didn't feel that good. And then the rogue lighting, like the rogue building didn't feel that good everything just seemed like stat stuff as opposed to like the immense amount of mobility options you have and like i don't know it's cool I was worried about the co-op since it's such a fast movement shooter glad the co-op works out i played with my brother um they scaled the amount of enemies and they scaled the health and it's genuinely harder like playing standard solo for me easy mind you i've played the game on the hardest difficulty i've kind of completed all of it uh but playing just like standard with two players is kind of pretty difficult and maybe my brother isn't just carrying his weight which like makes sense <laughs> um, but it's good. Uh, it's really, really good. Can't recommend enough. RoboCust is sick. I've also recently played through Inside for the second time to show my partner for the first time. Um, Inside, if you haven't played it, is phenomenal. It's an old game. The less you know about it, the better it is. It takes about two hours. Play Inside if you can. And the other game that I just finished um, last night while watching some Neon Static was... I never remember the name of it. What's that name where everything's voxels and you break everything? Tear Down. Uh, they recently updated Teardown, so it actually runs better, especially on machines that aren't amazing. It's a voxel-based game um, where the worlds are gorgeous. They're made entirely of voxels, but because they're made of voxels, everything is immensely destructible. And I played this game and bounced off of it. Uh, it starts as a heist game where, like, using tools that you have, you're meant to, like, break through walls and blow stuff up. Show me some destruction. It's really fun, right? Like, everything burns really well. Everything breaks really well. It has really good simulations. And then you're meant to, like, steal something. You have 60 seconds to get out, so you have to, like you know, juggernaut your way through walls and stuff. It's surprisingly charming. And then the missions get only more interesting where it's just like, get out of town. There's terrible weather. Uh, it's surprisingly fun. Uh, anywho, we'll get to Narrowner now. Let's build a deck. Yeah, man, Twitch chat. Absolutely deserted over there. That's a real bummer. Sorry about that. We have some news. We'll go over the news. We keep forgetting to do news because we get too wrapped up in playing Narrowner. So there's a thing I want to do today, which is the cheesiest of deep dive decks. And we've seen deep dive kind of do its thing for the last uh, little while. And we've seen deep dive decks that are playing two or three of in criminal, right? Like Sable works really well. We've seen some deep dive decks in Lats. I think specifically the uh, Cobra Bubbles list that came, um, what is it, fourth, I think, maybe at UK Nats uh, that was running two or three deep dive. Uh, we can do three deep dive. Because I'm really surprised that there's a version of a deep dive deck that I haven't really seen. Double deep dive. Yeah, Alex, I think we can do double deep dive in a single turn, which like some of those decks could do pretty consistently. Because the set, of course, got a whole bunch of ways to get extra clicks. If you're in Shaper, mind you, you can DJ Fenris and you can play Sable because Sable's a G mod. So 
if you have to run all three central servers, it's kind of regardless what your mark is, you're going to get in there and you're going to get an extra click back. Of course, hand is a really important card right now because there is so many tag decks and so many asset decks. And then the Venn diagram is sometimes a circle, uh, but she's also very powerful. And you can use this very importantly, even if you don't have a tag, just to gain a click on the turn where you want to, which is really, really great. But the sort of deck that I only barely saw at the beginning when it came out was Arasana. And it's been a while since we played Arasana on this channel, and Arasana is an uh, absolute treat to play, so it's been a bummer that we've not been uh, tagging some stuff in a while. But Arasana says during a run for no credits, you can install a program from your hand. And we saw a lot of Arasana decks that were trying to win. Some of them had a deep dive or two, but most of the Arasana decks for the last little while were trying to win off of, you know, going ham with Conduit. And while their playstyle was really powerful, I'd argue, into the mid to late half of the Continental season when people started putting together like elegant Arasana lists, it also became a lot worse in a lot of ways because people became aware of how to play against Arasana because Arasana inherently is a bit of a Punisher deck. Arasana is the sort of deck where like, oh, I went to a too few couple credits and now I can't res the ice on HQ. No big deal. And then Arasana slaps down like three Cubon on it and they're like running to make four credits clicklessly over and over again. Right. Like Arasana was really good where you just went to too few credits and then they got a conduit down and they're running, you know, R&D and getting money with Cubon and like uh, what's the one called? Adias Informant. And uh, the game was over. But not a lot of people are playing Deep Dive. It was sometimes a one or two of, except I think Arasana can be very consistently deep dive incredibly powerfully. And one of the big ones, which was a one of in a lot of these Arasana decks was Picha Shaw. And Picha Shaw gets a click when you pass a piece of ice. So inherently, if you can produce this clicklessly onto the table, which is relatively easy with Arasana, if you install it from hand, you can pull with SMC, you can pull with Simul Chip, all the Shaper stuff. Hey Yeti, how's it going? How you doing? Um... You can just start slamming through ice and then you can have that like very easy five click turn, six click turn, no problem, seven click turn possibly because you can move the Pichachan out. I actually didn't see this play until uh, I don't know what round it was during Canadian Nationals. Graveyard here gets to go to YouTube. I'm so sorry, Alec. Yeah, it might be better over there. There's a lot more chat. I'm so sorry. I don't know what's happening. I'll try and fix it next week. But one of the cool plays that we saw during, <laughs> hey Kyle, uh, during uh, Can Nats in the Swiss rounds, um, who was doing this? Oh, shit. It was the lat deck. I think Rob was playing this. But the idea is that you ran R&D that had a Peach of Sean on it. And then you simul chipped it when you ran HQ. And then you got that same Peach of Sean on the HQ ice. And then you got two clicks that turn. So you made two runs clicklessly. And that's really powerful. That's obviously really, really powerful. Another card that I think was in uh, Cobra Bubbles is a uh, lat deck that I thought was actually kind of interesting was Compile. And this card I haven't seen for a while, and I'm actually kind of impressed with what it does. It says, make a run for two credits. The first time you encounter a piece of ice during this run, you may search your stack or heap for a program and install it, ignoring all costs. When the run ends, add the program to the bottom of your stack. So firstly, it says encounter. So if the corporation doesn't res ice, you're in a bad spot. We have to keep that in mind. It also allows you to search your stack or your heap. So it is technically program recursion. And there's a bit more rig shooter out there than I'd be comfortable with. That's nice. As much as Shaper's not too weak to that. And then, of course, it goes to the bottom of your stack, which on its own, that's not a great place to put a program. But if we have SMC or ways to shuffle our deck both of those work uh, we'll be able to get the program back but the idea is that we can just compile and as long as we can get through the ice we can pull out a peach of sean if we need to this is also a run event so i think we might actually be playing three copies of swift because we have a fair few like tempo positive run events in shaper that'll let us deep dive with immense uh kind of acceleration the idea is that we have a swift down which for two influence is totally doable you can run a full place out of these uh you can compile you're going to get a click back immediately. If you pull out the Peach of Sean, you're going to get another click back from that. You also have cards like Into the Depths, which if you Into the Depths, uh, like uh, what's it called? Uh, any server, really, any central server, you also can install one of your cards. So you can go get a Peach of Sean from your deck, right? Like there's so many ways that you have all these run events that make sense for you that continue to push you forward. I meant to highlight this text, the middle text. So I think it's not unlikely that even as soon as, soon as turn two, we have the possibility of doing a five click deep dive. And like not being that bad for us. You're going to tap into the brains of us on the West Coast. I've been literally playing this deck the past week. Oh, sick. That's really good to hear. Okay. So there's probably something to this. The join stream seems compile immediately happy. Happy. How's it going? Hopefully you're doing well. Have you seen all the great Christmas deck writers from Warwick CEO? No, I haven't. Um, what, what are they like? Are they all like super holiday themed? Almost exclusively, we've been playing Deep Dive Arsana in Eternal for a while now, and it's a blast. I've seen your Deep Dive Arsana list in Eternal. And, like, with Eternal, it's different, right? Because you can just, like, skate off the value of Slap Vendel. But I think that's largely it. And I think that deck in Eternal is, like, better than, well, obviously, now that the other shapers would have been named out. Diana's Hunt finally getting sleeved. 
I don't know if we'll go that far, but you could. It's also like four credits or something. But yeah, Slap Vandal is another good tool. The problem is the more cards that we have to install from hand, like Slap Vandal, the worse it is for us because inherently uh, we want to be using our ability to install uh, Peaches Shans and stuff like that. That being said, too, we can also consider if we're running into low strength ice, like you could play any of the cards that when they come down, break ice cheaply because we're trying not to make that many runs. This is probably a bit of a fallacy, but you can consider things like Euler and you can install it with Arisana and just let it trash itself. Like that's okay, maybe. You could simul chip it if you really wanted to. Uh, what's the one that breaks barriers on the same turn? That one's probably fine as well. Of course, you also just have uh, Chameleon, which you can, if you know what you're running into, you can install this from hand. Who cares if it goes? There's a lot of different options there. Test run Q loop. Yeah, I guess. <laughs> Concerto. Um, I guess you could. Three cards is a lot, but it is technically... Yeah, you need run events more than you need setup events. I don't know why we would do that. Zeros' deck has an Essa short story where it's her life is a suburban hellscape. Oh, that's really, really cool. Um, and So we don't derail this too hard. I know I derail pretty hard. We'll try and check those out. They're up, right? Gauss on stronger turn factor. Yeah, Voido. That's the idea. Like Gauss, Euler, we could do all that sort of stuff. We also might just be able to get away with Slap Vendel. Like people are not icing centrals that heavily against Arasana turn one. Uh, so that's a possibility. I'm assuming there's going to be yeah, a lot of Warwick CO stuff. Christmas edition S. Okay, we'll check those out on Thursday for sure. Slay girl, slay. <laughs> Gift tags for Christmas. Oh, that's awesome. That's really, really cool. I do like me some theme decks for sure. Uh, but let's try and put this together. I think I'm going to struggle a bit to get the shell together because I think understanding what a breaker suite is going to be interesting. There's also a chance that like we can just play N'Golo and then like have a bit of support with Slap Bendel and say like N'Golo will break two or three pieces of ice and that's enough. We'll find out. Uh, but I think there's something here for sure. As much as like I don't love cheesy deep dive decks and this is going to be the cheesiest and the deepest. So at least we get the strongest of both categories. I don't know if I say hi Dunch. Hey Dunch. Yeah, Diana's Hunt was shouted out. Diana's Hunt is like one of those cards that is kind of red sand um it's real bad i think it's necessary for some like infinite combos and in eternal um but make a run whenever you encounter a piece of ice during this run you may install a program from your grip for free when this run ends trash all programs installed using diana's hunt it costs four credits i think that makes it the most expensive shaper event in the history of the game i hope you have a great day thank you i hope you do too is there a more expensive shaper event in the game like, four is literally, it is actually pretty expensive for an event. I think people forget how expensive Sure Gamble is because it gives you money. But, like, four and five credits is a lot for an event. Let's just prove that really quickly. Uh, faction, shaper, type, event, cost, greater four. Oh, beans. Okay, there is a five coster. And this card actually did see common play. But what it does is pretty absurd. Some of the G dubs were smoking something. Oh, red sand is kind of all over the place. Uh, there's a lot of cards in red sand that are just like unbelievably bad. And then there's unbelievably good cards. Uh, I do think, again, you know, if you tuned into the Metropolitan Grid that many years ago, uh, the quality control, that whole cycle was kind of messed up. That it does look to me like they sent the wrong files to the printer. Like, no joke. Just the amount of typos, the amount of bad formatting. It just seems like, you know, uh, there was some sort of issue where production had to go faster than quality control and or testing. For better and for worse. Making a card game is hard. I'm not going to be too critical about it. But like Red Sand, every data pack, it usually had like two or three fundamentally bad uh, typos or, um, you know, card quality issues. Yeah, uh, Red Sands is a really weird cycle. It's not my favorite. Uh, there's even some data packs that when it came out, I'd recommend even as a big Netrunner fan, like you didn't have to buy this. But yeah, BRE Watch was a big one. I think BRE is slightly better a card than it looks like right now, which is kind of cool. I think people don't break big, big centuries really easily. Just play Hydra though. All right, let's go. Someone probably decided to quit and had some fun or spite going on. The whole... Keyforge problem? Yeah, I don't know. I don't know what was going on there, but like for those, maybe this is like worth talking about for those who didn't know there. But like there's just so many cards that like literally the sentences don't read correctly because they're missing words. It's really strange. Was Red Sands when we got the card that had the exact same art as an existing one? Uh it was that era. I'm not sure if that card was in Red Sands. One of them was in Terminal Directive. So, oh man, I don't know the name of the cards, but that's like a really good example that. I've never seen this happen in a card game ever, but two cards were released with the exact same art, right? Like, how does that happen in quality control? 
Like, and I don't mean that gen like as an insult. Like, I mean, genuinely, what has to happen for that to happen in quality control? Like, how many people have to see this or how many people exist? Like, did someone exist who didn't see all of the content going out? Because admittedly, if you're working in a silo, that could happen. Yeah, spoofing. Nice. Biometric spoofing. And the other one was the Shaper one. Yeah. So this came out in Terminal Directive, which was the deluxe box. Also not a great product. And it was a neutral card that prevents two damage. Technically a very important card because there's never been a card in the history of the game. I don't believe that just prevents damage like this because this is any kind of damage and that's a very important card being on in universal i guess uh guru divinder to prevent damage and then the other one was a shaper card uh that had the exact same art they credited different artists yeah one artist was credited incorrectly so i'm assuming that they were meant to have art on it and then the wrong guard got posted on the card because i'm pretty sure the artist of the other card probably someone shouts it out what the other card is yeah I find it hilarious the card talking about lazy sysops not properly checking the work has the exact same artwork as the card which mentions making a duplicate of yourself to save doing the twice the work. Like that is genuinely really funny. She left behind an encrypted, let's read this because it's usually wrong. She left behind an encrypted trail leading to some random employee for rival corp. She knew lazy sysops would work just hard enough to figure it out and wouldn't bother looking any deeper. And then we have bio model network which is prevent all but one net damage. I can't believe I'm just now learning this. Oh, Mondi, how's it going? There was a really bad quality control for a while. And this is, yeah, peak red sand cycle. And this is you created and distributed an AI replica of yourself and projected into the network to run for you. That is very funny. It is genuinely very funny. And the name here, Mariusz uh, Shergeyev, it's hard to read. It's very low resolution. Is not the artist. And I don't know. This artist probably made something for this, but unfortunately, Jero and Wimberly's art got on top of that. Not that it's bad art, but like you just would have wanted to have any other art on it because you made the art yourself. It's just like, again, when I say, how did this happen? It's not so much that I'm be like, oh man, FOG, you're the worst. It's more so to be like, literally what would happen for this to happen? Because it's interesting. It's like really interesting. And I think it usually tells you something about the pipeline. And so like, it's important to understand how this could happen because it's fascinating. I remember the trace that doesn't care about boost and just does a core anyways. Yeah. So there's so many issues. Oh, we probably should do a video about this at some point. But there were so many cards around this era that are just like inherently messed up uh, to a really bad spot. So for instance, these corp cards got dunked on a lot and they weren't very popular cards. But notice the, the text here on the card. It says trace four. The runner cannot access any cards during this run. It's very important that after a trace, you say if successful. Otherwise, the results of the trace have no implication to the text after the trace. This is something that I think is relatively easy to miss, but also it's relatively easy to catch. It was caught almost immediately once this card was re released, as much as like way more people saw it in like the first 10 minutes than ever worked on the card. But they're just like, this is not even the most egregious. This was just like, you know, this is how it was. Yeah, Sync BRE Watch. Sync BRE Watch is the one that's still ongoing here. Uh, this one also doesn't say if six, this does say if successful. Oh, it doesn't say how long, right? If successful, the runner acts as one fewer cards whenever they access cards. This should say for the remainder of the run, right? And they wouldn't rot it. They wouldn't say anything about it. I still can't win games because I lost one of those chases a few years ago. I, I have friends in the Montreal meta that can't play Network anymore because the subroutine team fired. And now like single accesses don't make any sense. They have to be like, I guess we're playing Conduit today. It's such an issue. Sweet to hustle. How's it going? All right. I wonder if there's some internal conflict over templating going on. I don't know. And like templating issues are really weird. Like this one gets me. There's like, again, typical red sand cycle. Notice this thing here. Just like loop here. They must add two cards. All of this is for some reason adjust, adjusted. What's it called? Justified? Just, it's lined up with the subroutine indentation. Huh? Like, how is this not seen immediately? Like, I don't get it. Uh, Standoff. And these are not the typos. Like typos get me bad because indented. Thank you. Like the text here. Notice how it's tiny? It's because that is the text weighting of flavor text. Card text shouldn't be this small. And there's no reason it is this small. Look how much space there is. But that is the flavor text size, right? And it's just like, how did this get released like this? It's clearly that something had to come out pretty quickly. This is how big text is on Netrunner cards. This is how big text is on flavor text. And like at the end of the day, is this important? I don't know. I think so. But there's just so many cards that also had like typos on them. And they're just like every pack had a card like that. Where it's just like this is weird i forgot how absolutely absolutely putrid the q a was during the red sense it was really bad it was frustratingly bad because back then and unlike now <laughs> we like really cared about the game and then to see product that seemed like the people who played the game 
would have put more effort into it than the people putting out the game is incredibly unfair because I have no doubt these issues existed because of other issues going on inside FFG or a big, big mistake where they sent the wrong files to the printer. But like, you see, this is the, the font weighting of, of flavor text. It's not into, uh, italicized, but it's strange. That's far from the biggest issue with Standoff. London, Standoff is a really cool card. I don't know what you're talking about. I think Standoff is a neat card. Oh, we had mask. Let's not talk about balance, but Standoff always looked off to me and I figured my proxy were just low DPI. No, nah, it's just messed up. <laughs> it's just messed up. And then there's a whole bunch of cards that like just have straight up typos on it. I don't know if I'll be able to figure out one right away, but it was pretty consistently that there was just typos on stuff. Uh, what is the weird card that has? Yeah. I mean, when could you trash opponent's cards? Oh, yeah, that was actually a really fun thing, too. It's like people didn't understand how the rulings of standoff worked. Standoff seemed like a really fun card when it came out. When he scores agenda, the runner may trash one of their installed cards. Notice how this text is different. NSG does a lot of work to go back in to history and reformat a bunch of old cards that were like weren't formatted where a while. When standoff came out, we like put on our jeweler's loop and read this text and it says when you score standoff, each player starting with the runner trashes one installed card until one player declines. When this came out, I thought you trashed your opponent's stuff. That you ended up into this like really, really like petty match where like I score this, I'm gonna trash your card, and then you can trash one of my cards. But if you trash one of my cards, I'm gonna trash one of your cards. And then you were ripping up each other's board. <laughs> it's probably a messed up card like that. But it seemed like you were actually instead you have to trash your own card and basically be like, who's gonna stop first? Like you're playing a game of chicken. But I thought it was a game of chicken where you're ripping up the opponent's cards, which never should have been fixed. Yeah, it's so much fun like this. Standoff was super unclear. Yeah, it wasn't unclear. It wasn't clear. And like, I don't know. Is that something playtesting comes out where like you show the card to someone and they don't know how that works? Yeah, that's a problem. You probably should address that. But there's so many other things going on. I want to find the typos. The typos were so common. Um. Th okay, there's this one weird card that has like kind of like a gear on it. And there's like a person floating at a weird angle. It's a shaper event. So nobody played it. Does anyone know what this is? I guess we can just go to set. Yeah, I know that I said they're so common and then I can't produce one. Trash ID card, you can't trash IDs, VK, because they're not installed. Maybe it is Diana's Hunt, actually, Mess CC. How's it going? We just looked at Diana's Hunt. Does Diana's Hunt have a typo on it? Uh, no, it's not. It looks somewhat like that, though. That was a good shout-out. Uh, reshape? Uh, no, this one makes sense. But uh, reshape's not a good card. Like, for three credits... Swap to be on res dice. <laughs> Holy shit. Uh, but yeah, no, there's just a bunch of cards that like the flavor text is typoed out. Nyasha? No, it is this one. I was thinking of this one. But yeah, no, I'm not going to find good examples. Are we talking about the strictly better criminal run event? <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, that's a good one, too. Uh, sorry, I take no joy in this. Besides the joy, I unfortunately taking this in hindsight. Everything becomes comedy over a long enough period of time. But check this out. This is a really bad one, too. Okay, so this card came out. Mobius came out in Station 1, so it's card 24. And then let's look at the Shaper one, which is called... Uh, what's the Shaper one called? Does anyone know what the Shaper one's called? Chenchling, how's it going? We also play Standoff like that. What are you working on here? Uh... We're talking about the red sand problems because a lot of players don't know how bad red sand was for like a lot of issues. Hey, Daojin, reshape must be one of the most useless cards. What did it used to ever? I've never seen a C play, Daojin. And if you don't find a use for it, Daojin, no one can, man. What was the shaper one called? Shit. Hold on, give me one second. Shaper event R and D. This might work. Yes, this should work. Okay, so check this out. This came out in Flashpoint. It was called Data Breach. It's one influence, zero cost. Make a run on R&D. If successful, you may make another run on R&D when this run ends. All right, not a particularly good card. You have to understand back in the day, the card Conduit existed as an Anarch card, and there weren't a lot of payoffs for running R&D twice, especially because you can't play a run event, so you're just going to see the same card over and over again unless you trash the card. So for this to be good, it needed to work with something that saw multiple cards, and back in the day, Medium, which was what Conduit was, didn't require you to do a run itself. So this was technically a way that you could get value from that. So you can make a run, see cards with Conduit, a Conduit that doesn't require a run to make it do its thing, and then you could run back. 
And then during the Red Sand Cycles, they introduced Mobius, which good old Morbius. Also zero cost, one influence. Make a run on R&D. If successful, you may make another run R&D when this run ends. Literally the same text and then stapled on at the end. If the second run is successful, gain four credits. You're right, top hat motion. You're right, that works. Like, what? <laughs> and on top of this, like, back in the day, FFG was a lot more strict that criminals only ran HQ. Like, all their cards had to do with their HQ running. Uh, Shapers were all about running R&D. All their cards were about R&D running. Anarchs did stuff. Sometimes they cared about archives, not often. For what it's worth, I think that's a really cool thing that has to be shouted about NSG. Like, if you look at things like Zaya, Zaya doesn't care what central server Zaya runs. Uh, well, R&D or HQ. And NSG made a, a push, which I think is really healthy, to make criminals care about central pressure as opposed to HQ pressure. Obviously, this card makes no sense. Not only is it not a great card, but it doesn't make any sense in context that, like, we... Uh, six months ago, we introduced the strictly worst card in the faction that wants it. And do you know why this is? This is meant to say HQ. It was meant to say HQ, and they just printed the card wrong, which again, just flashpoint. Like it was just so bad on quality control. Like imagine that, that every month you're excited to get a product and it's 20 cards and then like four or five of the cards are just wrong. Ah, this was a really painful time for Netrunner. I mean, we're reliving this, but it was meant to say HQ. And this is like a neat card with HQ because running HQ twice kind of makes more sense because you'll see a different card uh, usually. Isn't that wild? Yeah, they admitted it was a print print. They did admit it was a misprint. They didn't errata it because, like, at that point, oops. But they admitted that this was meant to say HQ because it made no sense. And, like, again, whenever we get, you know, red sand, a bit upset about red sand, it's because this stuff was month after month, right? Like, imagine NSG printed something like this. It would be unbelievable. Obviously, they have a different pipeline, but, like, you know what I mean? It's just, like, totally different world. People see different cards when they run HQ. <laughs> Weird. <laughs> You can use it to make some uh, silly stuff with Fisk and Mobius, but it's not good, just fun. Yeah, there's like technically some uses for it. It's just like, it's not great. At least it wasn't a wireless net pavilion misprint. Uh, wireless net pavilion, I don't think was strictly a misprint. I think wireless net pavilion was a testing issue. So if you notice wireless net pavilion when it came out wasn't unique and now it is unique. FFG eroded that officially uh, because this thing won worlds and it was attached to a really mean deck that installed a bunch of these. But I don't think they ever said it was a misprint. I need a citation on this. I think it was a balancing thing that they weren't convinced it had to be unique. I might be wrong about that, but I'm not convinced that was an error. And this was back in, like, Universe Tomorrow had good quality control. Like, a whole cycle would come out, there'd be one mistake. So, I wouldn't be too pessimistic about this. Did they actually drop the diamond accidentally? That's kind of news to me, maybe. FFG alleges it was a misprint as justification for being a functional errata. Oh, okay, okay, so I'm, I'm not right about that. That's good to know. Whatever, that can happen. I don't think that's as big of a deal. Like, losing this, there was a chance that even without the unique, this card wasn't a problem. It turns out it was because you can play tag me and they can trash your resources functionally. But at the end of the day, I wouldn't get upset about FG about that. I would get upset about FG about that. This is functionally, this is such a, like, what the hell? And this is the sort of thing that, like, again, what is the oversight process on the whole set? Because anybody who played Netrunner to the sort of, like, hobbyist level understood that this card came out a month, uh, like, six months ago. So why does this card exist? And so clearly some part of the quality control wasn't plugged up enough in the game to understand that this card came out already. And that's a bummer, right? Like, I think everyone would love it that the people making their product are as invested as they are. Unfortunately, it's not. Of course it's not. There's, you know, you have a job somewhere. And that's why NSG is also very different and something we have to be very thankful for is generally anybody who's attached to Netrunner right now, it's because they really care about Netrunner. And that is a really shitty sentence. I'm not also in some ways saying that the people at FFG didn't want to make Netrunner the best thing possibly they could. They did. They loved the game. Of course they did. But also, it's difficult. They have a lot of other things they have to work around. They have oversights. They have deadlines. They have all this other stuff that currently NSG is not interacting with. And so like, it's really easy to be super pessimistic about it. I think it's fun to look back and kind of laugh and then see what can we learn about the pipeline? Like what is the difference between Neverner now and then? And pipelines are totally different. When NSG says, uh, we're late a month on the set, my response is good. Don't print Mobius. Shit. Uh, anyways, <laughs> we learned something. Ooh, ah, man, you can don't watch them because I'm embarrassed. But if you we did like weekly reviews or monthly reviews on all the data packs on the channel, you can see me. I'm like 12 years old. Uh, you check them out. He was really positive about them. Jemison was cool, though. One person in cast lock intern. Yeah, we hope they basically had one person working on the thing. That's the thing. It sounds like it. Like, it sounds like the team that was working on part of those things were so small that these sort of issues were missed. Uh, which like, again, that was always the painful thing. As soon as it was released to the public, the public immediately said like, wait, what? 
And it's because, you know, once your product goes out, more people see it in the first 10 minutes than the amount of people who've ever seen it in its history of its creation. But at the end of the day, it's just a bummer. Little baby Andre reviews Mobius. <laughs> just, it's not good. It's no good. <laughs> I just see about the FG era from people who didn't play it. It's kind of disheartening. A lot of snide takes. Yeah, there's like a lot of cynicism about like some of that era for sure. For what it's worth, when FFG like rebooted the game and right before the game got canceled, it was in a legitimately great place. Like Rain and Reverie was a cool pack, right? Like there's some good stuff going on. Obviously, there's cards in there that are banned. It's no different than now. Uh, but there was just specifically this one trough in Netrunner where clearly something with an FFG wasn't working, but the way that anyone at FFG would want it to, to work that way. There's no doubt the people who were making Netrunner at that time wanted to make a better product than one was released. Undeniable. Don't know who to blame. Probably the company. I don't think there's one person in FFG who's dropping the ball. It's just like, ah, oh, the QA person sucked. No, I don't think so. So yeah, r, &R was uh, was slapped. r, &R Rain Reverie, mind you. If you're not familiar with Rain Reverie, that's like the hard thing to get if you're looking for original cards because they just didn't print a lot. And then after they did the first print run, Netrunner got canceled. So there was only one print run. I almost didn't receive my own copy of Rain Reverie back in the day because stores were just over pre-ordered and under allocated and they just never received more allocation. Luckily, there's a lot of things like, you know, the community printings of Rain and Reverie, stuff like that. But I heard a little cat in here. Is there no little cat? I don't think there's a little cat yet. Uh, but yeah, it is what it is. Katara and RNR. Katara was really good too. Yeah, Katara was also really good. But have you got to the requisite 1,000 games played stronger to get the demon? Ben? Kyle, come on. Come on, Kyle. You know better. I wish it had been the Chilo cycle. Yeah, that is actually a really cool point. As Rain and Reverie was meant to be a bigger cycle that focused on the Northeast, the Chilo. That's the area between, I think, Chicago and I want to say St. Louis, uh, which I don't live in that area. And then they like ranged it down and <laughs> to Reverie uh, to make a smaller box. And that's actually really cool because you see like some kind of important landmarks. Like Lady Liberty is, you know, the statue uh, there in uh, Ellis Island. Is that what it's called? Uh, but there was meant to be a whole cycle that, you know, is around that area of the northeast of America, which is pretty cool. Um, as much as like, <laughs> yeah, make more content about New York. So cool. Uh, but you know what I mean? Uh, and unfortunately, they got the news that they weren't able to do a cycle, so they pushed into a small box. And Rain Reverie is also pretty notable because every deluxe till date focused on like generally two factions. At Now at this point, every faction was represented, so who knows what they were going to do for the next expansion. And so we got a bit of everything, which was a really good send off for the game because it was a really nice box. Uh, but yeah, it was meant to be a whole cycle about this area of the Northeast, and then it just got crunched down to, uh, uh, what is it, 60 cards or something? Good box, though. Yeah, they had rushed into the deluxe box, yeah, because they lost the license halfway through production. It was a really good box, though. Lovely Christmas Day trap. Thank you. We put it up on Sunday, I think. Uh, my partner wanted to get up as soon as December 1st. Uh, she's really keen on it. It is nice, though. We have a little flesh and blood card in there. You can't see it, but I do have a cracked bobble in there. All right. I'm helping. Yeah, thanks, Kyle. <laughs> How old is Andre if he was 12 when Red Sands came out? Yeah, the QA uh, of my age is also not good. That's quite the side topic. <laughs> just spitting over everything. It was so disgusting. Uh, you don't think I enjoy a side topic? I am so easily sidetracked. Does anyone want to talk about Arkham? Can we talk about alternate Jim Culver now? Can we talk about alternate? Uh, okay, we'll build it back. Hemlock spoilers. Yeah, we got some good Hemlock spoilers. Okay, I'm not falling into it. I'm playing the two-handed campaign for the first time. I was like in an Arkham drought because I'm not like, again, it's not Red Saints. It's its own thing. But like the latest release for Arkham wasn't my big thing. And then like they only do one a year. So I'm getting back into it. It's really fun. Parallel Zoe is so cool. She's cool. She's definitely cool. She makes... I'm just give me one second. She makes a... Uh... Sister Marie seem useless. And now, like, the new investigator they released from Hemlock spoilers kind of makes, like, alternate Jim Culver useless. It's really tricky to, to continue to make investigators, especially when, like, you're not printing a lot of new cards, uh, to make them all relevant. But, like, I don't know. Jim Culver's spirit deck is, like, kind of amazing. Actually, hold on. I will do a little caveat to talk about a game's design question in a second. I just need to close the door. One second.
Okay, so sorry. It's a slight Arkham tangent, but only a small one. Because this is something that came up, and I want to know what y'all think about it, because I have like my own thoughts on it, and I'm not sure what, at the end of the day, I feel the best about. But in Arkham, there are a couple decks that exist as side decks within the game. Something we haven't seen in Netrunner, but basically stacks of cards that you interact in different ways. So one of them that I'm a big fan of, what's it called? Market? I'm just going to search market. Uh, this is arguably a reference to, um, I'm, I'm going to argue it's a res reference to Aesop's Pawn Shop. Oh, man. Again, the worst part. I can't say this enough. One of the best things about Netrunner is that the card arts end up on Netrunner DB before they release. We've had this huge issue, hey Nana, in Marvel Champions, in Arkham Horror, that FFG is just no longer releasing card art. Scarlet Keys came out a year ago, and there's still no images on the database to have all of this. And it sucks. It genuinely sucks, and it makes these cottage industry products that everyone uses to do deck building terrible. So for instance, if I search cards, okay, and I go into the new set, this is no different from Marvel Champions, mind you, and I go to the Scarlet Keys, I'll say Investigator Expansion, we're not going to see any spoilers here, and then this is going to load slowly, and then I'll do, oh, let me see, I'll view as full cards. Okay? Nope. Okay. Nope. Do you know, these are the player cards, so they're more likely to be spoiled and get official, like, prints. But do you know how hard it is to play the game when this is what Never in DB looks like? Where, like, more than half the cards don't exist? It's ass. It's literally ass. It is the worst thing. And FFG isn't releasing card arts. It's the same on, again, Marvel Champions. It sucks to try and deck build and try to learn about the game and talk about the game and make content when they just refuse to release scans of the cards. Of course, there's some reasons why they want to do that. Maybe they don't want people to end up like they still end up in, the, you know, the, the mods. But what have I missed? Have we got to the part of the stream where Andre Sheets is Scarlet Key? <laughs> yeah, no, just I'm seen. Um, but like, I can't say that enough. Like, we don't know how spoiled we are on Netrunner DB uh, that we have images of the cards right away. It is just straight up the worst. I It's, oh, it's so frustrating that you can't see the cards. Okay. Do you, are you playing Flesh of Blood, Carl? I'm not. I haven't in a long time. I don't have the money to play that sort of game like that. If we play it, we play it casually at a table or we're like we'll crack pack someplace sealed or whatever. But I haven't played Flesh and Blood since the last pre-release, which I'd like to smugly say I won. So uh, kind of a big deal. So, OK, well, man, we're tangenting really hard. We'll keep this one really quickly. This Underworld Market, I think, is one of my favorite cards. I would show you how it's an Aesop's Pawn Shop reference because you see a guy behind a desk with a bunch of weapons and he's hiding his arm, which is maybe a joke. Uh, but Underworld Market is a deck that you get of 10 illicit cards before the game. Illicit is just a subtype on your programs on your cards on your events anything like Netrunner imagine it said icebreaker it's all the same connection before the game starts you choose 10 of them from your deck you shuffle them together and you make an underworld market deck at the start of your turn you reveal the top two cards in your market and then you may spend one resource read credit to draw one of them otherwise even if you don't draw one of them you place the rest on the bottom in your choice of order okay so we have 10 cards every turn we look at two we can draw one to the hand and if we do or we don't the other cards we choose go in the bottom in our order which means strictly after five turns, we know every single card in the deck, right? Because we know the order that the cards came down. Now, Arkham Horror is a cooperative game. Marvel Champions is a cooperative game. But there is no rules against or for note taking. How do you think about How do you all feel about this? I feel like my memory is not that good enough, but I should have full information of what my deck is after five turns because I'm drawing into the cards I put there. Am I allowed to put the cards on the bottom of my deck face up so that when they're on the top of the deck, I can see them at the start of my turn? And this is a weird thing because there's another card. Uh, Jim's Spear deck works the same way where it's a stack of 10 cards and there is no effect that shuffles them. But under remembering the order of all the cards in order is really important because you'll know what's coming next and you can play around that. This is the thing that I don't know where I fall because I don't think a lot of people can remember the order of 10 cards and that is a huge like balancing mechanism and if I could tell you the next spirit that's coming off of Jim's deck a hundred out of a hundred times I would be a much better Arkham player but I can't but the only thing that's gaining me here is my power of memory or note taking and Netrunner has gone out of the way to make sure that note taking and memory is not like a, a limiting factor so people can't play at the highest level that they want to but here you can't what do y'all think of that are you allowed to put your DBS cards face up no, but Devious shuffles, and you're not allowed to look at your deck. But you're not, but of course you're not, because it breaks the game. It doesn't break the game here. Also, Netdead has it going. 
In Arkham, so literally play any way that brings you joy, the appropriate level of suffering. Co-op games, there's no reason you shouldn't look at the stack you know the order of, right? It's how I play Eon's End, because having memory shouldn't be a prereq for having fun. That's the way I see it. Where I want to put my cards face up, because I agree. Like, me spending an extra five minutes at the end of every turn to, like, take the time to remember what my deck is will make the game less fun for everyone else. I genuinely think if I spent the appropriate amount of time to focus on my deck to remember when my cards are coming up, I'm not going to be table talking. I'm not going to be bantering. I'm going to be having less fun. And that bothers me because now there is like a gap. Like there's two, you know, dueling factors. One factor is how much fun am I going to have? How loose I want to take the game. And the other is do I remember my spirit deck and the order of all my illegal cards? And I don't know how to like marry these issues. I think I probably just put them face up. And when they come to the top deck, I'll be like, oh, I know what the next card is. I'm familiar with the underworld market since you did a great job using it during the April 1st video. Thank you, Alex. I think any order is different than random order, so placing face up should be allowed. Yeah, right? And again, the spirit deck, I think I'm going to search this one. This one is a bit more complicated to explain, but it is one of my... Well, apparently it has 27 cards of that in it. Um, It is one of my favorite new mechanics in the game. I would check out the fifth round, yeah. I don't know if I just want people to like agree with me so I feel less scummy about it. But to me, it's like a weird thing. It's any time that you know the perfect order of a deck, I would at least want a shuffle effect at some point to come into the deck so that like I don't feel bad about not remembering it. <laughs> this also comes up in Flesh and Blood. In Flesh and Blood, this is really important because inherently in Flesh and Blood, how it works is whenever you play a card, you have to pitch for that card. And pitching is taking a card from your hand and then using the card to pay for the card because each card can generate resources when it's pitched. But at the end of the day, the card that's pitched goes into your pitch pile. And at the end of your turn, you can take the cards in your pitch pile and you can order them in your choice of order and it goes on the bottom of your deck. Flesh and Blood games are generally long enough that you will get back to your pitch stack that people call it. But inherently in Flesh and Blood, you're not allowed to note take. Because if you were allowed to note take, every single person would understand every single card that they're drawing to in perfect order by the second half of the game. And people don't want to do that because then a 30 minute Flesh and Blood game would take like an hour and a half. So that is a game in which shuffling can sometimes happen, but they don't want you to get the full order. Mind you, it's not 10 cards. It's usually like 60. But for, they go out of their way. That being said, someone with photographic memory can probably do really well in that game because they actually understand every single card they've pitched. You can argue that you don't need to know every single card you've pitched. You just have to have some basic ideas. Like I pitched a bunch of blue cards. They're good at generating resources. And then I pitched one red card, which is the card that generates fewer resources, but does a lot of damage. So like people pitch stack in a way like that and they have shortcuts to remember it. But like specifically, that's another game in which like if you could remember every card in order, you'd win most games. But they don't allow you to do that as much as it's not that different from this. But second, the valuable part of Fab, 100%. It's a really cool part of Fab, too. It's actually a really fantastic design because you're picking, you know, you're choosing what your deck looks like at the cost of gas now. It's really cool. Underworld is not even five turns, it's four. Isn't it five? Isn't it five? Oh, you're right. Yeah, you know the last two, that's for sure. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's true. That's true. You do know the last two. You don't know the order, but it doesn't matter. Yeah, 100%. It's only four turns. Yeah, totally, totally true. Based on the discussion, I'm going to assume that you have never drawn an autofail and just said, no, we're going to draw a new token. Uh, I've never done that. For what it's worth, I don't do that because I think that is planning around that is more important. I don't mind autofails. I think autofails in, in Arkham are really kind of why the game's cool. In Spirit Island, another co-op game, there are adversaries that stack decks. I put the stack cards face up. There you go. Ask player group to do what I do for hidden but trackable info should stay hidden or be public. Yeah, Thanos, how's it going? I thought Fab is pretty affordable since they make the game pieces cheap. It's only if you want the collectible prints that's expensive. That's not true. Uh, that's not true. They've been doing a better job where now they don't have like first edition copies. Uh, and you're right. There's a lot of market value in the uh, like the uh, what's called the cosmetic variants. So like this is a full art or whatever. But that being said, still at the end of the day, right? Like the price of this probably went down. But if you wanted to buy, say, what's it going to cost? Um, Fiendel's Spring Tunic. The price of this, I think, recently came down because there's a reprint. But like legendaries are the cards that you only have one of in your deck and a lot of them are equipment. So they're actually really important because equipment starts on the table. But to play at a high level, you probably need to fend all starting price is $143 American. It used to be worse. It used to be about 200, 250 about a year ago. And then generally you have four pieces of equipment. They're all usually legendary if you're playing at a table. So like, no, things are really expensive. And then even cards that are like three of like Command and Conquer. I think the price of this came down a bit. It's not as good as it used to be. It used to be really expensive. But you want a full place at a Command of Conquerors. A single is $83. Right? Oh, sorry. Oh, this is Mint First Edition Normal? Wait, we don't want that. We just want, like, unlimited. $84 unlimited American. Right? What is, uh, what's it called? What's the one with the person throwing the lightning bolt and lightning strike? 
and these are old cards, mind you. Command and Conquer and Lightning Strike came from the first set. They've been reprinted a bit in white border. Okay, East Strike is down to $33, but still $33. You need to buy three of these. Like that's $120. Sorry, I did that wrong. It's like $100 on, um, you know, to start. Uh, 27 still like, no, it's not affordable. You can buy a whole Netrunner collection for what it costs you to buy like three Command and Conquers. It makes no sense. I think Clash of Family Format is the best entry point for Fab. It's basic elevated commoner. Yeah, there's ways to get into the game, mind you. Like, commoner, obviously, is very affordable. My favorite way to get Flesh and Blood, and I don't know if they still do this, is that somebody sold, and we have them sleeved up. Hold on. Okay, it's a bit harder to get to, but basically some store in Ontario sold for $10, basically a full deck, uh, like not a Blitz deck, a full 60 card deck, no sideboard, of mostly commons and rares. And it cost $10, which is like slightly above what you pay for the individual pieces, but you don't have to pick out the pieces. And they were just like, here's a hero and 60 cards. And it's just a pre-constructed deck. If you brought it to an event, you'd get bodied. But if you brought it to your kitchen table to play against somebody else playing the other $10 deck, you'd have a good time. And that was the best way that we enjoyed uh, Flesh and Blood and got into it as a board game. I did for years go out and play in public and played at tournaments and competed and won stuff and like I didn't travel for Flesh and Blood uh, but um, yeah if you want to get into Flesh and Blood like there's good things to do and I would just buy like a cheap deck they make Blitz decks this is my biggest problem with Flesh and Blood is Flesh and Blood the intro to play uh, the thing that you can buy and mind you now they have UPF decks like four player commander decks stuff like that uh, but the sort of decks that they recommend for you to buy that they have on shelves these pre-made decks these are in a format called Blitz and Blitz is a format where you play with 20 health and instead of 40 health and Blitz sucks because <laughs> Blitz is inherently like such an aggro format because you can kill someone in two turns, three turns, you go really hard when they only have 20 health. And as soon as you have 40 health, you actually can take turns off and just take damage to try and like create a swing turn because in Flesh and Blood, the cards that you use to block are the cards that will be in your hand next turn. So the more blocking you do, the less offense you're doing. And not only that, the games are longer. So this idea that I pitch stacked and then I'll actually draw through my whole deck again doesn't always happen in Blitz when you only have 20 health. And if you draw one bad hand in Blitz, you kind of lose the game because the game is only four turns as opposed to when you play, you know, the full uh, format with 40 life points, the game is like three times that so like that's the problem to me is the intro products play blitz and blitz is like a really bad format in general if you ask me but even on, on top of that a worse format to learn the game because it is incredibly aggro uh, you don't make that many decisions because the game is much shorter uh it's just not a better game it's like a if i only played blitz i would not enjoy flesh and blood and that's unfortunately the starter deck format i don't get it it's just because it's a smaller product ah sorry i'm gonna catch him on chat we'll go to netrunner i'm swear Clash of specialization cards, which give each hero the really interesting identity as really essential to make the decks feel fun. Cool. We drew 13 auto fields in the last scenario. First time I hated the game. <laughs> Sorry, Bumble. <laughs> I'm a bit jealous of my friend who liked that because I left magic for Netrunner because I got priced out. Now that I can afford a TCG, I don't want to. Yeah, I wouldn't encourage it. It's really expensive. I've only those fab decks and have never opened them. I don't see the appeal of this game at all, or at least I don't get why I'd want to get more into it. The game's really fun. The game is really deep. It's really interesting. I think the most fun I've, though I've had in Flesh and Blood is like in draft or in limited formats uh, because the games are really, really close uh, as opposed to, you know, somebody clearly bringing a better deck to the table. Um, I don't know. I had such great times playing like draft the first sets. Like they're really fun. Yeah, Fab Draft is really good. It is genuinely fun. Fab seems like there's a solid game there buried beneath a terrible distribution model. I played an LCD version in Heartbeat. 100% I agree. Also, someone just recently released an app that, and I know the people at um, uh, Legend Story Studios are working on this too, but somebody released a free app uh, so that you can play against an AI. I don't know what it's called. Let me find it. I can't say it's good because I've only downloaded it and haven't tried it. It has a really weird name. Hold on, it's loading. Okay, hold on. The Overlord Engine 2. But in short, it just gives you an AI that requires very little cards to play against. And the AI is basically some sort of giant something, and then you can play against it. And uh, it's, I'll try that. But there's a lot of ways to play Flesh and Blood that don't require you to spend, you know, $600 on a deck. Oh, Felt Table is cool too. They have like a JNet. It's called Felt Table. I've never played it. Magic the Gathering in any order means you can range it. And competitive settings you're allowed to note take during the game. Yeah, that makes sense. I think the appeal is that it's hyper-competitive akin to old magic. People definitely travel around the world. So, okay, 
<laughs> I promise you. We'll get back to Netrunner. But the big thing about Flesh and Blood that I think can sell it really easily, and I'm surprised nobody uses it as the talking point, it is functionally Slay the Spire multiplayer. It's the same sort of structure. And I don't know why other card games don't do this. Well, I do. It would be bad in Netrunner. You've probably played, you know, if you've played, uh, what's her name? Uh, whoa, what's, who's the violinist? One of my favorite Arkham characters. What's her name? If you've played her, or you've played Slay the Spire, it gives you an idea why Patrice, yeah, Patrice Hathaway, uh, Patrice, that's the exact idea. It, um, it is a game in which at the end of your turn, you redraw a new hand and then playing every single handout is its own challenge because you have to think what the opponent's going to do. And so every hand is like a distinct puzzle you have to solve. It's exact same sort of one more turn kind of bite that you get from something like Slay the Spire, where like I built my deck, I should have an idea what's coming up. I draw four to five cards. How do I play this hand? That's exactly the sort of entertainment you get in Flesh and Blood on top of it being wrapped within some sort of pseudo fighting game, which like I'm not a fighting game guy and I don't mind it. But that's a really big thing is it's all about uh that sort of slay the spire uh, engine and the slay the spire engine no like no surprise it's pretty pretty compelling 65 minutes into the stream has started deck building i haven't even finished my coffee andre byred versus cheer is still in the works it's been so long um i basically got most of the like the state machine to play never and then like i got sidetracked it'll take me so long and it is something i want to do but it comes at the cost of like putting out content and then like doing other stuff that uh, makes the channel good and like makes the patreon supporters feel like they're getting their money's worth so it's a hard thing to like go down that's for sure okay let's go okay um we're gonna deep dive as hard as we can as soon as we can this is the part where we start i'll don't worry i'll put timestamps in the bar <laughs> Uh, so we need to set up quickly and we need to get in quickly. I travel such a long way to play Patrice at the weekend. Ah, oh, Patrice is so fun, Dave. I hope you had a good time. I'm not allowed to complain because I explicitly helped cast the spell by using Arkham words when Andre most resists the urge. I know people know that they're baiting me into it and like, yeah, I'll take you up on it. If you want to talk about Arkham, I'll talk about Arkham. It's that easy. I only don't talk about Arkham because of, uh, the agreement here. That's a never in a stream. But like, if you really want to, uh, diesel three X. Okay. So we have to figure out what we need to get out. I think we're going to play Swift. So Swift is really important. We're playing as many run events that can generate as many accesses. Mushin, you can't even write that down. What are you talking about? Um, so we want to get run events that will make us be able to make runs on central servers so we can get a big deep dive down. We talked about how there's many good ways to do that. Uh, of course, we have Arasana. We can consider at a minimum playing uh, Bayabans, which I've been so happy about. Are you going to do some Doomtown content at one point? Uh, probably not. I don't play enough Doomtown. Doomtown is the sort of thing that I'll play once a year, put a learn to play video on. But like, I don't even have the new Doomtown products. I don't even have two core sets anymore. It's like the sort of thing my partner and I play casually with the pre-built decks from the core set. Uh, I wish I'd play more. I was was almost able to get the new stuff. It's really hard to find in Canada. Like That's just unfortunate. Doomtown is really hard to get in Canada. You can order directly from them, but the shipping is like 1.5 times the price of the product, which like... No. Uh, yeah. Jailbreak. I don't think we need Jailbreak. Jailbreak doesn't make that much sense when it comes to Deep Dive because we're going to see eight cards on R&D anyway, so then Jailbreak only makes sense on HQ. So I'm going to try not to. Nuka. Um, yeah, the other things that we want to do is, uh, what's it called? Uh, compile. Seems pretty powerful. Two is a bit expensive for sure, but this means that we can get a Peach of Shawn out. We can get the breaker that we need from our deck so we can install Oilers. We can install Gausses. We actually can do a lot with this. We can compile ourselves entirely into a uh, winning, which is kind of cool. So we'll see if we do two or three. I think the other big shape or run event, if I'm not mistaken, is into the depths, which is pretty good. Card draw and extra HQ access is so good. I don't think it's the most important thing, but it's not bad. The problem is like as soon as we play out a jailbreak in the early turn, like they can see that we're going aggro in centrals and they might want to ice up centrals a bit more. This is called the cooler shop effect. <laughs> and as much as possible, we don't want to force them to play into a way that will make us uh, harder. Unironically, you should play Joyride. I think actually maybe we, in some ways you do want to, in some ways you don't want to. You don't want to because we're going to struggle because we're going to draw all these cards. So we're going to have like all these cards in our hand and we're not going to know what to do with them because we're not going to know what to do with them. We also going to run this like inherent tension that if we Joyride and draw into our thing, sure, we have an Arasana trigger once we turn, but if we need to find our things with Compile, like we're in a bad spot. So maybe. Hey, Augustus. This is the Forbidden PPVP Swift deck. It's like, man, prepaid is in a really rough spot. And NSG just announced that they're going to make a prepaid altar for the new CO kit. But if you ask me, can we spend more influence and just play Mystic Miami? Is that better than prepaid? 
it's like super comparable. It might be better. It might be super comparable. This comes down and you can't use the credit to turn that it comes down, which is different from prepaid. Uh, but prepaid isn't terrible. What's your breaker suite? What else do we need in here? Is there anything else that we need for a run event? Ghost Tongue? Ghost Tongue? I've tried Ghost Tongue and Shaper, especially in the sort of like Joyride uh, package Shaper. In fact, I even played Ghost Tongue in, uh, what's her name? In uh, Padma. And I think it's terrible. <laughs> like, I've seen this too. I think I was ripping Pat because Pat played Ghost Tongue in like Ken. And Ghost Tongue is three influence and it's a core damage. So that is, you know, a legitimate cost. The problem with Ghost Tongue is you can count the turns in which Ghost Tongue gives you more than one trigger a turn. And it's usually about once or twice, right? Like there's a lot of turns that you don't play more than one event, let alone, it doesn't make sense to play one event, let alone an event that costs at least a credit. And if that's the case, like you can just say three influence and play prepaid voice pad and it does the exact same thing. And I think when we, I watched Pat play Ken at like a GNK or a C or something. And he installed Ghost Tongue, took a core damage, lost a good card, whatever that happens. And then Ghost Tongue fired once a turn for the next four turns, which means like, yeah, it's just a prepaid you paid three influence for. The PPVD altar win rotation at the end of next year feels weird. Oh, that's a good point. Yeah, it does feel weird. I figured PPVD might be getting PPVP. Why is everyone saying VD? Might be getting some support in the next set. Events. Yeah, maybe. I don't know. Joyride is missing something. But sometimes like cards like that, like uh, Sid's Joyride, kind of stand out on their own because they're, you know, designed uh, by a person. Hey, David. Good morning. Okay, what else do we want? Is there anything we want? Lean and mean is not, oh, it is a run event, not a good card. Uh, make a run if you have three or fewer icebreakers. This like is a bit too expensive for what it does. Um, Hushik is like kind of cute if we're actually set up for Hushik because it allows us to see the top potentially six cards of R&D and then it shuffles. So then we're gonna go back in and then we're gonna see more cards with deep dive. This is obviously pretty expensive, but like, Genuinely, maybe like I don't think I've played a Hushik deep dive deck, but it's not the worst. Uh, Joyride is maybe a consideration. Into the Depths, I think, is the next like run event that makes a lot of sense. Uh, Dirty Laundry makes a lot of sense as well. Do one cost Hushik? I don't think there's a lot of one costers in, in Shaper that come to mind. I think that's about it. Sure, Gamble. Okay, I guess that's a lot. That's too many events. Let's be honest. Gabriel Celesi. Why do you want Gabriel Celesi for? Gabriel Celesi is a marathon runner. Go for distance. 3x overclock? Oh yeah, overclock makes sense. Overclock's really good. That's a good shout. And the fact that you overclock Central's with an SMC, like, yeah, of course you're going to do that. All right, so we want, I think, Simul Chips. Okay, Simul Chips is good. Uh, we maybe don't need three. We have too many cards. We're going to cut it down. We also have to, like, just play Netrunner on the remote server at some point. Um, that's kind of you know worth keeping in mind uh i don't know what else we want here we still have a lot of influence to use but like we can use that pretty easily i hear good things about climactic showdown <laughs> genuinely like so i know bob was talking about this the other day i don't love this card i think there's a lot of ways to make this card more interesting like make this optional so you can actually do some cool stuff but if i want to play climactic showdown i want to play climactic showdown with uh new uh what's with uh iru right i think iru climactic showdown seems kind of fun because then you can run R&D and see four cards. That's probably cool. Feels like a Palangi deck to me. It might be. It depends on a Breaker Suite. And the fact that we haven't answered what a Breaker Suite is, that's kind of more important. Breakers? Oh, okay. Uh, Fermenter. I'm not too hot on Fermenter. You saw how hard we get burned out by, like, everybody playing seven copies of, like, uh, Mavirus? Are we on Urban Art? You'd think we might be, but I honestly genuinely don't know if we are not dead. We probably should be just because like we're running anyways. We can return cards to hand set up cheaper. It'd be silly not to, but I don't know if we need three. We might be able to play two. So when you figure out what a breaker suite is, understand that a breaker suite can come out cheaply and kind of ad hoc. Switch to lat. Uh, there's a chance that's right, but I'm hoping that with uh, with nuke uh, with Arasana we have the ability to install things clicklessly, which should help with our deep dive. We'll find out. But yeah, I see that you could put this in lat, but then you're playing a lat deck. I don't like to do that all the time. Okay, so we need to get a breaker suite that makes sense. Slap Vandal makes some amount of sense. It's hard to rely on Slap Vandal to run three central servers. So we might want to um, not. 
Uh, SNC on 3X makes a lot of sense. Peach Sean, we probably want two. One is pretty interesting because I like the play where you do one Peach Sean and then you run R&D Peach Sean, then you simul chip it to HQ and then you go from there. Like, I think that's pretty cool. Ika, of course, yeah. Ika is like a, definitely uh, a consideration. Um, I'm not the hottest on Ika. Where did the Nana go? Oh, she's on the bed. Uh, I'm not the hottest on Ika. It's good for cycling. I don't like breaking with the Ika, but it's nice to have something there for sure. It's one of the best ways that we can set up while not having to like lose our stuffed ice. Uh, what else do we want? Like, I don't think we play Cuban. I don't think we do. We're playing Ika. So things that are kind of interesting, hyperbaric, it's okay. The plan is one big dive. How about Nanook? Never again. God, Nanook is awful. I did one stream with Nanook, and I was just like, every single turn, we found another frustrating reason why Nanook sucks. Like, imagine we run HQ and steal an agenda and it just absolutely ends our deep dive. Because Nanook runs away. Nanook does not trash. Nanook leaves. Goes back to, yeah, technically, I've been told the bear is Canadian, uh, which is the only, like, saving grace about that bear. Oh, speaking of, we'll get back to this, but, uh, it's here. You wanted it. That's actually such a gorgeous full art bear. Holy shit. That's so nice. Adam Doyle basically put up some uh, some new play mats. So we have cards from the, the recent set. So Slap Vandal and Vig, which is a much better art than the amount we see him. Big Bear knows to leave people alone. Yeah. Everyone with the card doors unlocked. Everyone's working together to fight bear in northern Canada. <laughs> Rightfully so. I don't think you want to mess with the bear, especially if the polar ilk. Uh, what else do we want? Like, we're not playing Chameleon. I don't think we can afford N'Golo. Like, is this a chance that we do, like, Toolbox Cabanessa sort of shit? Where, like, we have uh, an Oiler comes in and then we just do one good turn? I think so. Like, I think we can do two Oiler, two um, Gauss, and then just try and win in a turn. I love this story. I love to know the story about who did over my sweet fluffy friend. I don't know. It's worth knowing that, like... Probably the answer to that is Cabin Wu, because it's definitely worth knowing at the time that apparently we're not going to find it because she's banned. But it's 100% worth knowing at the time that Nanook was uh, in design, Cabin was still in the legal card pool. And Nanook is technically a problematic card with Cabin existing. Uh, so without Cabin I think if Nanook was re released, it would be a much more powerful card. So just keep that in mind. That's probably who did the bear dirty. RFG gets me every time, yeah. Thoughts on Nanotech? Uh, nanotech is a better card in certain metas we're not expecting a lot of ice on central servers nanotech is really good if they're putting three ice or four ice on remote servers it is a late game rig and at the end of the day is the late game rig of turbine nanotech better than turbine echelon versus anything else it's up to you but if we're just trying to get on the table as soon as possible getting a nanotech down to deal with a single ice on rd sucks because like imagine it's a drafter right like it's just really bad numbers would on make making more sense with the influence spend for extra clicks i don't th Makes sense, maybe, but to do the really cool deep dive thing we want to do for like highlight reel, definitely not. Because you're right, it gives us a card draw, but we just want to be able to win off of like a single turn. What's really wild, like imagine, okay, we can deep dive on turn one. As soon as turn two, if we have a swift down and they ice up only one central server, like this is what we can do, right? So we have a swift down, we have four clicks. We're going to get probably wheels in here. Okay, so we have four clicks on our turn. We swift and we, uh, I don't know, overclock HQ. We access the card. We install a uh, breaker. Great. We maybe have to get a Peach Sean there. No, we get a Peach Sean. We install it on the ice. Okay, this is our abstract turn, right? So we start the turn two. One central server R&D is iced up. We have a swift on the table, okay? So click one. We dirty laundry HQ. We get a click back. We still have four clicks. Okay, we have four clicks left. Um, great, 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 great. Then we... Oh, I think we messed it up. Because <laughs> you have to into the depths of the server with ice. Okay, so I think then you have to compile. So you're going to need SMC on the table because you're probably going to have to overclock to get the breaker down or something like that. And then you have to compile to get the Peach of Sean. The Peach of Sean will fire. Then you run the other server. So in short, we'll be able to do two deep dives in a turn. You're missing DJ Fenders for Stable. I think we might consider it. I don't think we need it because I think it's a really greedy card. I just got here to hear, and that's who did Nanook dirty. And my anxiety makes me immediately assume you're talking about me who named the card. <laughs> hey, Pat. I think Nanook's name is the best part of Nanook. We should tell about the town of New Hampshire where the Libertarians took over town government and then the Bears came. 
can't tell if that's real or not, but it sounds phenomenal. I hope everyone's safe. Uh, okay, what else are we putting in here? So, other things that make sense that accelerate us. For to some extent, like we would maybe want to consider this sort of click compression. And it's not exactly click compression as much as it is click offset, but we could even consider cards like uh, Paola's Cafe. And I know we inherently don't have that much support. Uh, Urban Art for Nassage is not a unique connection. Hannah is, Nuka is. But with Paola's Cafe, as much as this is really click contensive and makes our Asana a bit more challenging, uh, with this, we can actually get all our breakers onto the thing and then at instant speed, pull out something and go com combo really hard. Uh, so we'll go for that. Uh, that's an option. DJ Fenris also works with this package. It's unfortunate this card is too slow, and as much as the new set was all about connections, uh, this card did not get that much better. Uh, but we can play some Lost Geek. Ban her? Uh, I don't think we really want to ban her. If we want to ban her, we also have to play like Air Blades, and I don't really want to do that. Libertarian walks into a bear. It's a very real story. I build similar decks like this, Peach, then get bumped to hand after compile. Uh, won't it? Won't will it? That's only if it's the second time. But you're right, technically, if you do compile the Peach of Sean, get two fires on it, it will return to hand, but I don't think we can do that. Wait, what? Am I missing something? But yeah, I think Swift here is really cool. Why do you need air blades? Because if we take the damage, we lose the deep dive, and then we can't deep dive. Because we can't take damage in this hand. Oh, uh, this is a 51 cards. This looks pretty bad, but also we can see how it draws. We only have one killer. I think that's okay. At the end of the day, like we can probably go through a drafter. Um, lol. Uh, but we'll see how bad this is. Honestly, the slap vandals we probably can like start calling. It will go to hand if you have gained a click from Swift. Holy shit. The first time you play a run, event gain a click. Peach is Sean. Whenever you pass a host dice, you may gain a click. If this is not the first time you gain a click during this run, add this program to your grip. Whoa. I thought this text only cared about itself. Whoa. That actually is genuinely really cool. I guess the folks at NSG figured out how to not make this busted. So the idea is that if this is on the table, we get a click from this, it has to be already on the table. No, it doesn't. Okay, so if this is on the table, and then if we play a Swift, we've gained a second click, a first click. So then when we pass the Peach of Sean, it goes back to your hand. And then when we run R&D, then we get the Peach of Sean it down again. This deck is probably pretty cool. Enter Diana's Hunt, come on. No. Is that timing correct? It should be, right? So say Peach of Sean's on the table, and then we play a run event. So we've gained one click so far. Once we pass the ice, Peach of Sean will gain a second click and then return it to its hand. Make the first run without a run event? Does Swift gain a click before the run starts, though? Wait, I'm not sure whether that matters. You play a run event, gain click. So when you play it, you gain the click. I don't know when the timing is. I don't know how it matters. It's when you play it, so it's not after the run ends. So it's kind of like how in Sable you get the click before you access. So you'll have the click when the run is played, and play will be before the run actually starts. That's really neat. Oh, actually, so this is a cool deck. This is genuinely probably worth uh, tinkering. And on that note, mind you, last Tuesday, and I like Tuesday streams because we get to do some deck building more than we do on Thursdays. But last Tuesday, we built that like as tag deck. It genuinely was okay. Like, I think we can tune it. And that's the problem is I don't spend a lot of time tuning decks because we try and just play a wide different range of decks. I don't think we need urban. I genuinely don't think we need urban. What are we going to urban? Is there a sentry that works like Euler and Gauss? I don't think there is. It'd probably be like a Palangi. I think Palangi is probably yeah, really good with Euler and Gauss. Uh, it's kind of perverted. Perverse, not perverted. It's... <laughs> Let's go. <laughs> but like, this is maybe the sort of deck that wants to consider Cyber Trooper to loot. It's weird how you'd ever consider to loot when you have access to a turbine. Mayfly can deal with sentries. Yeah, Mayfly is awkward though. Is a swift click during the run though? Yes, you will have it when the run starts. I'm pretty sure. That's my guess. Um, so like we can consider this, this seems kind of like extra, but the idea is that we'll get the, uh, what's it called? These down. Let's get rid of the slap vandal. Is that this will come down a bit more. Maybe we can play two of them. Okay. Turbine feels really tricky. We just five MU too. Yeah. 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 So I think we could maybe do the cyber trooper to loot. It's really nice. The gauss doesn't really matter so much, but like having this come in at higher strength is kind of cool. 
Cyber Trooper is one thing why I dislike Turbine. Uh, Dunge, there's so many reasons why to dislike Turbine. And like at the end of the day, any of these lists, and we have to put up still, I'm still editing together our like revisit of the tier list, but it's like, oh, cool. This is my really cool, uh, you know, what's it called? Um, graffiti living mural deck. And it's just like, why would I play this when I can just play Turbine? Like that's the problem is like so many, we got so many weird tools where like, this is a cool shaper engine, which allows you to break ice cheaply. And then the answer is, unfortunately, I'm just gonna play Turbine. It is just so hard to build something interesting in Shaper where at the end of the day, like Living Mural is probably not as good as just playing Turbine and like any other killer. <laughs> Bongi, Euler, and Gauss sounds like a first match <laughs> law firm. Yo, I'm Doge. How's it going? That's really good. Yeah. Uh, cool. This is something. Okay, we have to call some cards here. Uh, we have some influence too. Is there anything really cool we can do? I generally don't think we have enough money. I know Fermenter was suggested. I'm not a big fan about Fermenter right now. Is there another economy card we can play that's not awful? Oh, because the question is, PJ Sean says the first time during a run. Oh, oh. So the big question is whether Swift gives you the click during a run. Uh, is there anyone in the rules team here? Hi, rules team. Does Swift give you a click during a run? I would argue it doesn't. It probably doesn't. Sable does, mind you. Yeah, at Crore, exactly. Okay, I'll, I'll check after the stream, if not right now. Uh, three simul chips seems like a bit much, but we need to cut some cards. Two influence, if anyone has a good idea, we have until I set up. I honestly don't know if Biobands is worth it. So click this before the run begins. So it's not during the run. So the Swift Peach Shao interaction is not correct, right? So Sable Peach Shell might be interesting. Sable Peach Shell doesn't work unless Sable, sorry, uh, DJ Fenris, obviously, but if Sable would need to hit off of a different server. Yeah, the vent is played before the vent text is resolved. I'm assuming so. I, I, that's the way I see it. I think you get the click and then the run initiates. It's because when you play it. But I could see it either way. It's Jaina doesn't do it like that, which is really probably going to be annoying. Oh, we can play Fenris. Oh, we just need money. How do we add money to this deck? Thank you. Verdict is no, as in verdict is it's not during a run. So the interaction on JNet is incorrect. Urban art, we have no, we have literally one Trojan. I don't think we're going to do urban art though. Yeah, that is a big boo for me. That's a boo from all of us. Huge respect to the rules team, but come on, come on. Uh, Diesel, great. SMC, dirty laundry, whatever's open. We can consider buy a banzing, draw two, just install simul chip. We don't have enough money. Uh, draw, that's good money. Draw. Swift is probably scary for them. We theory could consider deep diving this turn if we had an overclock in hand. Okay, so we want to just make sure that we have enough money as soon as possible. I think into the depths is probably not what we want in our opening hand uh, for a couple reasons. Uh, what else do we not want in our opening hand? I think the buy a bands are probably good. They seem a bit expensive. Ika's Trojan. Oh, I forgot I do have Ika. Yeah. But the problem is like the money that we get from Urban is only for reinstalling. And currently we don't actually have that much to reinstall, right? Splash of Miami. Liberated accounts. Yeah, I think we were considering Miami. We now have an... Where did our influence go? Liberated is a bit slow. Like if we're going to play Liberated, we might as well play Telework in Faction. Like they're very comparable cards. I think Telework actually might be better. Uh, cause I don't think we're gonna be on six credits for just about any point in the game. Uh, Miami is reasonable too. It's probably better than prepaid. It's only two influence. So we'd have to cut a Fenris or something. Maybe we can cut a buy bands. I think the interaction of Jane is that if you gained any clicks at all, it would turn will ask you if it should be back to hand. Cause you're supposed to click no in this case. Oh, okay. Cool. Augustus. I feel like the cyber troopers probably play egret over Polongi. Daily cast. Daily cast is fine. Egret over Polongi is kind of interesting. There's a lot of ways to purge in the format, but we have a lot of ways to simul chip it. Egret's also like kind of expensive, right? Is it three or two? It's two. It's only a res piece of ice. We'll keep that in mind as a possible change. But ideally during the turn that we're like doing our deep dive, we don't want to do the Egret from hand. We want to do the Peach Sean from hand. We're going to struggle with challenging their modes over that's for sure. Uh, we have to cut a lot of cards before we add money. That's going to be a problem. So compile can be a three of. We don't want this in our opening hand. Probably should be a one of, let's be honest. Uh, creative deep dive diesel dirty laundry into the devs overclock shirt gamble fine simul chip can probably be a two of as much as we use it relatively well with oiler uh hannah has a two of maybe 
we can also like build into more meta cognizant decks like we could play a, a one copy of the thing that trashes upgrades what's it called or non-upgrades assets apresha this opening excuse me discussing how do we open this nuka open uh dirty laundry uh we could do hannah we could check a remote server if we really want to play it on a simul chip unfortunately draw okay we wouldn't have drawn we would have nuked um hiding stuff this is the bad hand we just need more money in there i think we just need to get telework down and we have to like cut some of the greedy cards do we really need into the depths how many run events do we have three overclock good three dirty laundry good deep dives not run event two compile three buy events you can also buy events to install a nuka or sorry install uh this is a really cool play that i haven't seen happen but you can pop a hannah and then you can buy a bands like archives and install the second hander from hand and pop that and you can get like a nine click turn or something absurd i didn't do any math turbine is always better yeah uh this is playable right sure gamble we buy bands whatever here we'll install the hannah is that anything here i don't think environmental testing is that big of a thing like David Cast would probably be better in our deck because the only time that we install this stuff is when we're comboing off. The problem is we'd have to cut cards. And like I'm pretty convinced DJ Fenris is a bit too ugly or like a bit too extra, considering like already we have so many ways to get clicks that we probably don't need additionally this. As much as it's kind of cool with the Peach Chan. I also don't know if we need two Peach Chan. It's really important, but I don't know if we need it that soon. There's also maybe something to be said about having less of these breakers and having slap vandals which maybe from hand lets us go off quicker but i don't think we want to deep dive unless we get like a bunch of clicks into here man this is hard this is why every deck should be a 50 card minimum it's so much easier <laughs> do we just cut that into the depths it abstractly seems pretty nice the quick search informant you can tell peter is the only card in the standard card that lets you gain a click during a run uh that makes sense is there any way to get a click when you install a card no how many cards are there that allow you gain a click gain click basilar yeah but not during a run right so basilar you just gain more allotted clicks so the turn you install it you don't actually gain the click which is kind of unfortunate because you get a lot of clicks to start a turn i guess we cut a cyber trooper it's probably as bad as an economy card and the economy card is just better uh we have one influence left we have 50 cards like Pinhole is actually really good in a deep dive deck, and it is a run event. I think that makes a lot of sense. That fixes our influence. All events are out. Bummer. 51 cards. This is awful. Do we just run one of each breaker? That might make sense. Because then we just like simul chip them around. Ugly, but might make sense. Yeah, that might actually make sense. And we have compile, right? So we find them consistently enough. Uh, I would play 48 and not feel terrible about it. I'm wondering if cutting these is good. 2x Nuka, I think card draw is so important in the deck. And our only card draw is Nuka and Diesel that I don't want to cut Nuka. Like, she's one of our best turn one put downs, right? I think putting Telework in the deck might make some sense too. But I just don't know what slots to attack for that. Like, maybe 1x Polongi. That would make sense too. It's just our SMCs and our sound chips are going to be pretty well taxed. I guess that's why we have uh, uh, compiles. Did Restream get banned? Unfortunately, yeah. On, on YouTube, or sorry, on Twitch, Restream's not coming through. I don't know if it's got banned or not. We ran into this problem last week, and I thought it was just a one-off instance that I didn't set up the Restream right, but I did again and focused on it, and we don't have anything. So I have to double check. But yeah, unfortunately, the Twitch chat is like pretty empty because you don't get the YouTube in it as opposed to this side. All right, I'm going to play 47 cards. I don't care. We'll give this a shot. We'll see how it goes. I will not go out of the way to say what our bad matchups are before the game starts. Uh, let's go. Andre has picked a side. No. Frankly, do I ever want to log into my Twitch account again? So I welcome my new Google Alerts. I feel like you're having to choose between two pretty bad choices there. Uh, what's her name? Arasana Raksha. No. When I made a deepest dive deck, I put an Isla. I also used Running Hot and Katurga to recur any dives I hit. 
Oh, weird. Running Hot's kind of a cool card for a deep dive deck, that's for sure. That is technically an event that gains a click, but not during a run. Triple Swift is greedy, but why not? I know, that's why I'm feeling. Why not? Like, if we're going to try something, we're going to try really, really hard. And then it's the same sort of idea that we did last week. It's like, we're going to play Thunder Art Gallery, so we're going to play three Thunder Art Gallery in the deck. At the end of the day, should the deck probably be on three Thunder Art Gallery? Maybe not. But if that's the case, we're going to find out, right? Like, that's the thing that we do for the sake of testing. Ooh. Look at business shot. You'd be playing with some PE grinder. Yeah, at least there we have a chance of like finding the Fuji and hopefully making the game. Sable works. Yeah. Sable does work. Sable's, I think, the only way to gain a click during a run, maybe. Besides the pizza shop. Maybe. There's probably something convoluted. Is that one really bad Algernon card still in the format? Sable compile deck? Compile can't be less than three influence. Yeah, three influence. Kind of cool. It's actually for what it's worth. Like this sort of card, if you're playing criminal and you're getting your programs destroyed, not the worst card. Because bottom of your deck, as long as you have a boomerang or mutual favor, it doesn't mean it's out of the game. Ran a startup deep dive Katurga Essa. <laughs> I thought this game would instantly be joined. That's 20 games out. Sometimes it takes a while. I don't have a good idea. Uh oh, white blades here. I don't have a good idea what uh Sounds like it's board 3x. When it says Metropole Grid Life, what does that mean? Like, people are scared. People are like, let's go in there and play something good. Let's play some, like, I don't know. This is an intimidating join. Like, would I rather join this or Dead Pixel game? It's up to you. Join whatever you want. Before Eric finds out that he can absolutely stomp through our room. Shh. Don't tell him. Ah, oh, shit. Oh, no. <laughs> Sorry. I thought he quit his game. He didn't. Ah. <sighs> Hey, it's not dead. Eric has been idling for a while. Okay. Prov. Prov is cool. Uh, Prov can be anything. Checking remote servers is really hard. So this could be traps for sure. So no joke. With this hand, we can deep dive turn one. Depends how they ice up, but we could deep dive turn one. Running is a bit difficult. Luckily, we don't have to run that much to give Prob Devos ability. I think Prob Devos is better than the amount of play it sees. This hand is, like, kind of okay. Obviously, sure, Gamble is good. Dirty Laundry is a bit tricky because they get value from it. We have two SMCs and a deep dive. I'm going to mulligan this hand. I'm going to mulligan this hand. This is obviously not a bad hand, but it's probably not what we want to see here. I could see us drawing into a worse hand, but if we want to, like, really pop off, we're going to need a slightly better hand than this because we have no card draw on this. So our turn is, like, click draw, click draw. Sure, Gamble. SMC. Ah, we'll keep it. it. It's safe. But we really need to draw a Diesel or uh, a Nuka off the top, too. Ah, oh, Subliminal. That's fine. I'd rather them have a credit than an advancement. Deep diving without five credits against NBN is probably wrong. I think we can do it and have five credits here. Never mind. <laughs> so in terms of the prob ice, like Mesna Chesso is at a bit of a burden. Uh, we break it for functionally three credits on the turn it comes in, I think. Oh, no, we're going to have to boost. Oh, Spin Doctor, then ice. Okay. All right, so let's set up. Okay, so this one breaks Mesa Chesso for five credits. The turning comes in. That's not bad. I'd rather them get an S uh, subliminal than anything. Does it help you win if you turn one deep dive? No, it doesn't. Uh, but it's cool. If they're playing like Crypto Crash, which a lot of times you do end up playing four twos and Prob Devos, it's nice to steal one or two of those. Right, like they we still two crypto crashes were like kind of coasting for a bit. But yeah, this is why we should have mulligan this hand, is we don't have like really elegant uh plays for a minute. I mean it helps you win if you get an agenda. No, not really. Like if we steal a Bologna on turn one, we probably lose. Like we don't want to pay five credits on turn one to steal a three-pointer. So it's not exactly always correct. Netdad is installing and then drawing. That's strange. So what is this? If we don't run, it can't be a 4-2 unless there's a seamless. If there's a crypto crash, right? Like, that's the worst thing when your opponent has the absolute gall to, like, do something that stops you. I just want our opponent to just build board state and only on the remote server. But at least we got a Nuka here. Okay. Advance advance. So shipment from Vladisabrisk, or sorry, Vladisabrisk City Grid makes a fair bit of sense here. Uh, we're getting closer. 
We actually probably could deep dive here. We just have only no click gainer cards besides the one FSMC. Shit. We're very certainly rich enough to do deep dive run right now. Uh, probably still shouldn't. I'm worried it's a crypto crash. Turns out spending nine inputs on compiles and two on a peach, you can't afford any deep dive. <laughs> that's true. I totally forgot you have to play the deep dive, the damn deep dives in the stable deck, and that's where your influence goes. Uh, generally, the five influence card is the one that you don't want to splash if you can get away with it, right? So here we dirty laundry. Like if they advance a card, it's not the end of the world. So we can consider dirty laundry. We need a stable. We need to go deeper through our deck. So I think we nuka. We could buy a bins, obviously to install. I guess we'll buy a bins R and D. It's fine. The best probability is Biotic RPC Beal, I think. I wouldn't say it's the best. I think it's actually really bad into the modern meta because there's a lot of impact there. Okay. I'd rather them draw an NGO front than anything else. Okay. So we are set up next turn. We don't have our, again, we play three of our console for a reason, am I right? Uh, here we already made one successful run, so we can make a second successful run. Uh, the other idea is that we can do SMC Creative Commission. That's fine. We discard a card. We can discard it into the depths, I think. No, we want it into the depths HQ. Yeah, thinking, Ooh, this is really tricky. Like, we actually have a deep dive set up here. It'll be a six-click deep dive. We want another deep dive in hand. Like, understanding how quick you go off, that's kind of the problem. So we can just dirty laundry here. Wheels of spin, if no trash, scare them. Yeah, I think you're right. We might as well. I always forget that we could just do this. How's it going, by the way, Paul? You ready for the weekend? Are you playing on Saturday? This, if the force is a shuffle, we can now dirty laundry R&D, which is nice. They probably let us trash this, though. Yes, I am sick. I think it's going to be a big event. Not sure what it'll bring, though. Yeah, me neither. Ah, that was not good. <laughs> we didn't have to trash that. Okay, so uh, actually, it probably was right to get the SMC down there. If they just squared a Bologna, we're happy. If they squared a Crypto Crash, we're at least on seven credits here. NGO front, okay, they have another NGO front. They do install advanced events, it's fine. We trash the card, we actually could get oppo I guess. Okay, so. RPC plays Glacier, not many impacts this is. Um, it doesn't really play that good Glacier. Like, it's weak to Botulus, it's weak to Hippo. You can't Hippo Naket, but, like, I don't think it's the best Glacier NBN deck by a mile. So, no, I, I'm, I'm not that hot on it. We could have got the SMC down if we want to look for something that turn with Ari, right? Yeah, we also haven't used Ari. Okay, so the question is, we can deep dive this turn. They can res one piece of ice. We don't know what's in front of HQ. 12 cards and no agendas. Uh, the... Deck might be on few, but it's suspicious. The thing is, we're like, we're just deep diving. We're not actually going for, um, uh, to, we're not playing fundamental now. We're just like cheesing. So we can run HQ here. We can install the SMC. We can into the depths HQ, mind you. We can install the SMC. And then we can see what happens. Uh, the problem with into the depths here, we can crack this one. Then we can dirty laundry. We only have a single deep dive. So the most we can steal is five points. We can try and win one. Off one deep dive, it's really hard. I think we're gonna try and win off one deep dive here because it's fun, but we could hold for another deep dive. Like we could wait for a nuka to go off. Uh, so we're gonna do it. Let's try it. So we'll into the depths HQ. Uh, no action. They raise a Hydra. No, that's a problem. Okay, so our Asana, the SMC, we'll use the SMC, which highlights itself to get an Ika. How expensive is this? Sure hope we can break that. Remember, you can hold and set up more. I know. I'm, I'm going to go for it, though. But you're right. We should. Six is pretty good. Six is genuinely pretty good. The problem is here having enough for Bologna. Oh, uh, if we cracked a Peach Sean, though. If we should have got a Peach Sean. We can accept one tag. I don't think we want to. Oh, you're right. But this breaks one for two. Yeah, so we should take a tag. Because we can just hand it out. Yeah, you're right. The question is, do we Peach a Sean on top of this to get an extra click? We can't really use six clicks, so I don't think we do. Yeah, actually, uh, I'll take a tag.
So we can solve program from the stack. We could have used this SMC, mind you, to get another thing. I don't think we have to do that. Yeah, taking the tag is really smart. Your money's super low. No, but we have a dirty laundry again. We're going to get four credits off this. It's not that bad. We just know that that's an NGO. We think it's an NGO. <laughs> cool. All right. I haven't seen this card in a long time. That's a nice butt. All right, let's trash that. If we trash this, we see deeper, but we can only steal one Bologna. Damn. A cat Bologna hedge fund message has to escape that. Come on. Seamless launch is scary. Vig spin doctor. Okay. So steal Bologna. This is not great for us. Access another card. That's going to be a no for me. That's a shipment from Vlad there. All right. Nuka. I think we have to wait for two deep dives. Because spending one deep dive. At least they won't trash the Hydra. But spending one deep dive. Yeah, wasn't great. We could have gone slower. Felix like Gabenet's your fault. I don't do anything. I played against Scapenet. I don't like Scapenet. There just shouldn't exist a card like that that just says like trash a card on the other side of the board because you accessed a card. Like Trace does not make that card fun. Okay, I think we learned we went too soon. We could have just waited. That's fine. Because now we're at a card draw. We used a bit and we're down on two few credits. I feel like we can only afford to do one big turn and we could have waited because I think there's an NGO front in the remote server. So Breaking six on HQ is like not the worst, but uh, yeah, we this is where like I'd probably be like, all right, we'll try again and we'll just scoop. But uh, we're gonna play a longer game here. We think that's a mess in the chest, though. This is how I feel about Trojan Horse. Yeah, Dan, I think Trojan Horse is also like un uh, relatively unhealthy. Okay, so that's probably NGO friend, so I don't know what this is. Under the bus, best defense, say hi. I know you hate that kind of thing. Under the bus does feel a bit better because connect losing connection doesn't cost you the game well losing program costs you the game best defense i've always hated i thought best defense trashing zero costers like you just can't like it was a sort of thing come with a what's it called deck uh off-campus apartment deck loose before the game starts like that's not fun okay ideally we're stacking our run events getting the swift down is like whatever it's cheap enough that we can do this next turn we could have drawn there and discarded Scapenet doesn't hate programs? No, it doesn't, but Tro Trojan Horse does. Like, that's the problem with Trojan Horse. It just hates programs. Yeah, I, I don't like those cards. And, like, it's a huge difference, you can tell, between the FFG design and the NSG design. It's like, NSG is not putting out cards, which is just like, oh, if you've accessed a card, you can lose the game. Like, it's quintessentially the difference between, uh, you know, hard-hitting news and um, opera research. Like, if Trojan Horse was not when you accessed a card, but when you trashed a card, like, is it more interesting then? Yeah. It's still good. Aftermath, the bin breaker rotating? Yeah, <laughs> there's a lot to it. So any of these could be a neurostasis. Uh, that's fine, I guess. They might not want to score at their uh, crypto crash because, like, we don't have money. As soon as we do the dirty laundry archives, it's different. We could dirty laundry archives. I just don't think we have a big reason to. So that's a bio vault. Uh, I don't think so. I think it's more likely shipping from Vladisabirsk. Or sorry, Vladisabirsk city grid. I don't think it's a bio vault. I'd be really surprised. Because like they're more of a neurostasis trap deck than they are like a keep out deck. That being said, Hydra is like really good. But I think Hydra is just a messed up card right now. Like they could have res this for five credits. Because who's expecting to be breaking a six strength century into NBN, right? Like this card is messed up. I want to play around Crypto Crash. I'm not going to dirty laundry here. So we're going to install this. And I think we can throw out a Peach of Champ. Yeah, I think that's fine. Yeah, not good. I'm trying to think what combos with Neurostasis or standalone trap. I think it's a standalone trap. It's like no different than Urtica. It's just kind of more fun because <laughs> it, uh, it's more interesting. Three cards a lot. Yeah, there's the NGO friend. So this is a Bologna or something. They have money. Advance, advance. Big Beal. Oh, sick. Okay, so that's a shipment from the Disabersk. Uh, that is probably something we can't break that easily. So here they can fast advance a 4-2 from hand. So we're not in a great spot. 
We don't have a lot of card draws, so finding our deep dives is actually kind of tricky. That's something that's worth keeping in mind. Uh, so we might need to add more card draw to the deck. We're getting somewhere, but we just don't have a deep dive, right? Silent Chip's pretty good. Get rid of the Swift. Pinholes? Okay, because pinholing down the ship of the Vladisabrisk City Grade cost four to trash. That might actually have been worth doing here. If they score out, they'll be on because they can do install, move to, advance, advance. They can score four two from hand. I don't know if we need a second simul chip. We went off too soon. So like I think this game is a bit of a wash because it's, you know, we spent a lot of money doing that. And we didn't win. Uh we needed another deep dive in hand, and even then we probably don't win because we were not financially able to respect Bologna and to get a, a Peach Sean. We could have got a Peach Sean on the Hydra. The Hydra, unfortunately, was like eight credits to break. That's pretty high for what we expected. But yeah, we should pinhole this Vladis Brisk City grid. Okay. Let's draw once for economy. Because here they can, can they win? They do advance, 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 move two. So that's a seven Beal. A seven Beal is worth four points, right? They win here. Right? Because five Beal is worth three points. A seven Beal is worth four points. We actually have to trash a seven for their superior score. We lose this turn. That's pretty interesting. And that's the whole idea. It's like they're playing Beal or no Beal, which is always a good good fun so this is a disabirsk i hope there's an ngo front that you can consider resing here overclock remote overclock remote's actually like probably pretty reasonable that's probably pretty reasonable they're thinking is this a bio vault regardless if this is the bio vault overclock remote still makes sense The problem is like we have to deal with whatever this is, which is an Aked or a Mesna Chesso, and then still have five credits. Can they move with the counters before you trash? Yeah, they can actually Thanos. That's what we're messing up here. I think they have to. Yeah, I don't know why they didn't. So if we overclock the remote. We probably have to install the Euler from hand, which comes in for one. Uh Mesna Chesso, I don't know if it's at least we don't lose this turn. That's fine. <laughs> ah, we're one credit short. Okay. We're gonna have bigger problems. Okay, Euler in hand is okay. If in the bin, the question is what are we simul chipping? Right now, the only thing we simul chip is the Euler, so I think we can throw out the Euler. All right, let's see what it is. Yeah, I don't know why they moved the counters over or not. Maybe us paying four is better for them? But yeah, if that's a Beal remote server, we would have lost if we didn't bring this thing down. Nobody plays this card. This card's kind of cool. This is one of the like first released cards. They released one card for every faction. Oops, I made a run, and now I lose my simul chip. Like, this is a... I don't, get, the right play was not to make a run. We saw that card too, but like, you know what I mean? Like, how is that fun? I don't get it. It's not interesting. I think we have to run this. I think we do creative commission overclock. Like, I think we do click on creative commission. And now that's our only Euler, so we actually cannot run in if we think that's a mess in chess flow, which is probably the mess in chess flow. Hold on. <laughs> Damn, that dead is having fun. I guess so? But like, well, I trade seven. If it was trade zero, then at least we have to play a game. Like, then it's kind of more interesting because they don't know how much, but they know we can't spend. Slap Bendel would get us through Messina. Yeah, a lot of things would. We don't have a Slap Bendel in the deck, right? No, we don't. The thing is, like, apparently we're in a world where simul chips are, can't be counted on. That's hard. Um, so in terms of, like, ways that we can get our breaker back, we have one more simul chip. We have one more into the, the compile, I think. We have two compile, actually. All right, I think we lose to Big Beal. At least we can force some money here. So I think we'll just do Creative Overclock and hope it's an Aket. It's more than likely not an Aket. Tuesday stream, have we done news yet? Pax Unplugged was awesome. No, Jam, we haven't. I want to hear about Pax. 
Oh, sick. Okay. It was fun to lose to cool Netrunner people. A special shout out to the Izzy who is very kind of showing me why tag me as was terrible. No, <laughs> wait, like the sort of tag me as we played. How did it go? Although you did discard a simul chip earlier, so it's partly your fault. I know, but like, how do you, what do you, what do you mean to do around that one? Gauss. Fully break a cat, I guess. Oh, we can't even steal Bologna. I think it's a Beal, though. Yeah, it's a Beal. Okay, we would have lost. So we're still on track to not lose the game. Uh, we'll creative. We can win. We can actually win. But yeah, it made sense it was a Beal. I'm not sure why Net Dead didn't move the counters over. Because they would have won this turn. Because you can do that at any paid ability window, right? I wouldn't call my deck what you played was loosely inspired by the Metro version, but worse than Pilot terribly. I'm so sorry to hear that. All right, uh, there's a chance that we can win here. We have to into the depths HQ. The problem is like we're playing around. The deck is on nine points of Bologna, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. We have to hit like a tomorrow's headline. So into the depths HQ, we break for five, we gain four. So we're on six credits. And then we're just hoping that we can run R&D. If it's a code gate, we're messed up. If it's a mess in the so. I keep forgetting you have Tuesday stream. Solomir, how's it going? If you want to share JM the list, I'd like to see. It's been a minute since I've seen the old DQ. People are playing in like J uh, and what's it called? NBN Glacier for sure. I'm going to try for it. I don't think this makes a lot of sense because we can't break a code gate on R&D. But they haven't advanced this card yet. So I think we will float a tag. Uh, I will do one float a tag. That's easier. Uh, we'll gain the money. Access. Because we have to break this for three. We're not trashing that. Master or Q-Loop decks are very hard to pilot. They're fun, though. You're right, they are hard. But with no taking, you can also like kind of tilt your deck a bit. So here to make the, the run on R&D, we can run now. If it's a mess in Chesso, we lose three credits. They go down to three credits. Even harder with no Q-Loop. So we need to be able to get through this ice. If it's an Aket, we have to boost break, which will be three credits. It's doable. We have to make a run here and a run here. We have four clicks. So we can draw once for an overclock. Our best top deck here would be an overclock. We have two left in the list. I think we draw for an overclock once. Shit. Okay, now we run R&D. We could have, you know, ran HQ less. Toll booth. Okay. That's obviously not good. Uh, so now we're going to have a grind of a game. An absolute grind of a game. I'm just going to draw, draw, I think. Okay. Let's see what if a single tag matters. I don't think it will. Spin. Okay. They have a neurostasis in hand. But like we went off of a single deep dive. We just have to set that up. Why don't we put a slap home? Huh? Uh, we didn't think we'd have to. Like at the end of the day, breaking toll booth with uh, simul chip oilers is not that bad. I think it's like three credits. We could put a slap in. It might not be wrong. We're mind you already playing 47 cards. We're in a rough spot. I don't think it's going to get better. And now we're going to get to that late game like NBN grind, which is a problem. Uh, best thing is they don't have money. The thing is that they also don't go quickly. And it looks like this is the only advanceable ice. These might be advanceable. Uh, but yeah, NBN Glacier is kind of, it's kind of real. And if you're not playing a turbine deck or you're not playing Hippo, it's hard to deal with this sort of deck. That's for sure. They spin doctored right away. Okay. Uh, they're getting four credits a turn because of subliminal daily quest. I think we just like play as slow as we can. Like eventually, right? Maybe. A boarding control would be a problem. It's really weird to play Hyper Glacier and then play Providibust, right? <laughs> like, you want them to run, don't you? So we know that's another Vladisaburst unless it's a, 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 a Biobalt, which would be a problem. Oh, we have Hannah. Don't really want to play Hannah. I don't think we need to remove the tag here. I think we just click for credits. We need to get a Nuka down to draw a bit. If they trash our Nuka, I think we're happy with it. All right, two compile. That's really good. So now the only thing we need is money. Uh, we don't have telework. I know we're tagged. We played three sure gambles. We played two creative commissions. Oh, I think updated. There was an update to Cyber Feeder. I don't know if we have a way to sort really quickly or not. I think we just click for a credit here. So we don't need the Hannah anymore. The bio bands is not that great. I think we do something like that. Bio bands remove tag. I don't want to pay two credits. I don't think the tag's gonna matter. 
Because the game's going to be fast. Yeah, because they skirts don't score it. Don't score Crypto Crash. Action? Nah. You can start by enabling the feature. Fuck. How's it going, Rai? Hold control to sort? No dice. Now we're in a bad spot. Uh, let me see if I can get this to work. Cyber feeder. Because I put this to auto update, but I don't think it did update. So how do I update it? Because I'm still on version 3.2.1. Oh no, this, this, this look new? Lower centrals? Oh wait, it's here. Oh! Oh! God, that's so cool. Oh, look at it go. Oh, that's sick. Thank you, Rai. Hey, Bridgman, this list looks dope. Saw a nice swift line on JNN once and kind of wanted to get around to testing it. Yo, how's it going? I'm really excited about it uh, on the basis that Peach's Shaw compile seems really fun. We we went too early. Like, we went for a deep dive and only saw Bologna on like a five click turn, which is bad. Uh, we're now kind of locked out, but it seemed pretty good. 3.21's latest. Rahi, what else is in there that's new? Uh, Bridgman's been back to streaming. I think Bridgman streamed last week, if I'm not mistaken. So, if you're not familiar with Kitchen Meta with Bridgman and YouTube chat, there's a channel there. It's Finn. It's a really good Netrunner. Uh, I think we're cooked. I just think we're cooked. What are we drawing into? <laughs> Shit. Yeah, we we need probably telework, and I think we need a bit more siege engine money. Like they need to be scared of us. Currently, they're not scared of us. Because in theory, on like two credits, you shouldn't be scared about our sonnet to some extent, but we just don't have siege money credits. So I think we just like click three here. Uh we didn't draw into our last copy of What's it called? Which oh, all three creative were out. Okay, so that was actually a pretty bad nuka draw. Yeah, not good. Is it possible you might port a Google Chrome? Time to click for credits and try dive. Yeah, actually, how's it going? That's our only option. They're on one credit, so they can score still score from hand next turn. They can do install, advance, advance, move. They can score a four two or three two, which is all they need. So to run HQ, it's six credits. So I think it's more likely. I don't think you need a two dive at this point. This point, we don't need two dive. Oh, like keep two dive. Yeah, yeah, we didn't need to keep two deep dives. That's for sure. We're also now tagged. So we actually do care about all the subroutines on Hydra. Uh, we can give the corp five credits, actually. So that's fine. So we still break this for five. So if we overclock HQ, thinking math. So we have to figure out how to win. Running HQ for single access here is pretty reasonable. Uh, they've shuffled back non-agendas for the whole game, and they've gone through uh, 23 cards. So five agendas, kind of cool. Probably have one in hand, or they're waiting for one. So here, if we overclock HQ, we're going to be on nine credits. We're going to get a click back. We break this for five. We're on four credits. They can't res the outermost. We're OK. Uh, discarding deep dive is a big tell. There's not a lot of tells to be done when we're on four cards off in the stack. So NetDad knows what we're playing, I think. You're right, but also they have to expect when we're playing Swift. So it's not too big of an information lead. So say that we go through this, we're on four credits. The problem is if we need a compile to get through the toll booth, we can't because we can't lose the three credits and or end the run. The altar it's being sideways on the top here is pretty cursed. Uh, but yeah, that, I don't like that. That's like kind of sucks to read that if you're not familiar with the art and toll booth. But the problem is like running R&D here. So I think maybe the only thing we can do here, maybe we should play one cube on because it's like technically a, a compiled target, is that we should run HQ a lot. Um, we could hit the top of R&D if we really tried to. Compile would put us on three credits. Again, we have to break this with the one copy from our bin, sort alphabetical uh, of the Euler. Euler comes in for free. We have to boost three, break for free. So it's six credits plus eight credits because of the compile. It's pretty bad. Optimal tournament toll booth. Yeah, it's good when you're, you know, you're sitting across from an opponent because it lines up with them. But here, but what else is new? You can also sort of remember secret info like R&D access and parse chat log into icons. Whoa. OK, I have to check that out. You don't have a slappy. No, slappy would be good. I think having one slappy is probably worth it because we could slap Bendel the toll booth for four. Uh, but I think we just run HQ here. I don't know what's left in the stack. Um, I'm not sure what's left in the stack, but I think here we just overclock HQ, get an access win. Actually, no, we should have Bologna credits. So we're assuming they can't res this. A uh, cat is three credits. Uh, but I think the best play here is just credit, credit, credit. And then overclock HQ, and we might be able to run back. I didn't know math. Fuck. So we're on 11. This is one. It puts us on 10. This is five. We can still access Bologna. That's fine. 
Uh, SMC probably has no targets. I feel like they have nothing in HQ. They might. It's not like we can do that much else. Like a single in R&D. I think the HQ axis is slightly higher uh, chance. Like it's the best we got. So Eka has been good. We're too broke to compile through Tilbooth. We can. It's just a single axis. And I think if we do that, we don't have enough money to um to steal Bologna. Uh they might only be on two Bologna's for what it's worth. But like I think on average this is better for us. This is one for two subroutines, right? Oh, that's so good. The problem is like we can't overclock RD, we have to compile RD, and if we compile RD, like we definitely don't have money to get through the toll booth. So we can actually take the three damage. Is it more important they have five credits? On three credits next turn, they can do install, advance, advance, flood, disappear, so that's fine. Uh, I think the three net damage is like not great. Them having five credits is probably worse for us. We always could have considered trashing this, but it's kind of hard with the Akat. We have to break that. I don't think we take the net damage. I think they can have some money. That's fine. What are they going to do? Scape net us again? Shit. <laughs> ah. Um, okay. Probably lose. Should it be possible to port into Chrome? I was secretly hoping that someone who knows how to do that would make pull request. They have to play around uh, Claude to some extent. You're good. Ah, good. Was that Hank? GG. Was that in hand? Yeah, we just went off too soon. I think we can do that again. We definitely can do it again. Yeah, so there was one in four. We got a unlucky. You missed it twice. Ah, beans. That damn neuro. Um, I deep dived too soon for sure. Yeah, we should have just slowed down a bit. Uh, but we had the one in four in HQ, so we technically played the line cleanly. HQ trap after all. <laughs> all right, thanks for the game. No need to yell. All right, cool. We learned something about the deck. We're going to make some small changes and we're going to go back. That's what we've been doing on Tuesdays. We've been building a deck. We've been iterating. We've been going back and it seems pretty cool so far. We used one breaker all game, which is pretty funny. Uh, obviously, there were some issues associated with getting your breakers down. But again, we like trying to play minimal viable economy is a bit difficult. And we have to figure out what minimal viable economy is. I do think the DJ Minerus is too greedy. I think getting this down for three credits and then having to run, uh, it seems like it's a bit much. So I'd rather get, I think we had enough run events. We wanted to check for log for swift count. Oh, that's true. Uh, it's probably four or five clicks. I think four or five seems reasonable. And unfortunately, that matchup is like a bit less good to dirty laundry archives for like clickless three credits uh, because of prov, but it was fine. It was fine. Didn't seem bad at all. Uh, so here, playing a single slap vandal is good. We're already 47 cards, but I want to play telework. Like I want to have some amount of economy that we can just like slowly work on. And then we have this as a click a turn while we continue to set up. The Baya Banes are cute. They're a bit expensive. Euler, Gauss, Ika. I forgot we had a Plongi, which I think Plongi was still in the deck. That's worth keeping in mind that like, we have access to Plongi Euler, which is pretty good. Uh, Mayfly maybe is worth considering. Like maybe Mayfly is just better than most of this. And then we have to like worry about less stuff. Like we can cut slots. No Cubon. We're looking to do traditional Shaper Startup. Uh, we're doing just like three deep dive. So like the game is hopefully over before Cubon is actually worth anything to us. That's the way we see it. Swift count five clicks. Thanks, Ned Dad. That's not bad. Like, obviously, Onicom is similar, but it's more not that we want to draw through our deck, it's that we just want the click when it matters. And we're trying to play three. Got absolutely shredded by a Persephone Arasana. Resing in development was a mistake. <laughs> Dan, yeah. Uh, I guess they're on, like, Egret Banner. Because, yeah, that's a problem for you. We're now on 49 cards. I don't like that. So what do we have to do? Card draw is important. Hand is important. We have one influence. I'm not sure what to do with that. The pinnel was pretty good. It obviously is important. It's a nice run event. It helps to run archives and deal with like central remotes if you need to or central upgrades, excuse me. Uh, the compile seems okay. Should we add a Debrado here? It's probably a lot of influence and it isn't better than just playing inside job, right? Like inside job is the same amount of influence and just a better card. Egret and Bonhar, 2 per 7, and I lost 10 cards off the deck. Yeah, that's sick. That is really sick. I was so upset. I was building the S of Persephone deck and thought it was so cool with Plongi and then found out it didn't work and I had to destroy like a couple hours of recording. It's fine. No big deal. Not upset. 
Uh, I think we can get rid of Pichichon. We only need one. 48 cards. That's like basically 47 cards. One influence left over. Obviously super ugly, but we're testing. We shouldn't be too precious about it. If anyone has a good idea for the influence, let me know. Uh, yeah, I think Eric is idling, unfortunately. New game. Are we hoping to fire three XD dive in the same turn? At least two. I think three is possible, but very difficult. But yeah, two. We're trying to win off of a single turn. Uh, which I, I think is well within the realm of possibilities. Yeah, Palmer's another pinhole is reasonable. Um, another pinhole is predicated on more money, but it's probably one of the best like run events. We can cut some nonsense run event and just play another pinhole. It's, it's good enough. Like early Rashida turn one is so important. Uh, I think pinhole's just kind of absurd. It's also really good with like Euler and stuff like that and compile because if we're charging their mode server, heaven forbid, we only have one really good run in us before the compile eats the program that it spat out. And so like having to deal with mana garm and anoetic and stuff like that could be pretty difficult. So I value the compile there as well, or sorry, the pinhole as well. Hush for influence. I'm not too excited about hush because we're not running often. <laughs> Three bite Mike. Uh, we're running like maybe, you know, every server once. And generally during that turn, we don't have the click compression to get down the hush on top of other stuff. So like if it's a fun house, who cares? You know, this is probably a reasonable matchup. That's a good hand. I think that's a relatively good hand. Thank you, too. All right. Uh, we have no card draw, but we have good economy. We have an early swift. PD just smashing centrals early is pretty good. Let's see how this goes. Edgy, ice, ice. Not the most common start against Shaper. They maybe know what we're up to. Uh, they didn't put anything in remote server, but here on nine credits, can we force them to res? I think we can. I don't think we're worried about that much. We obviously don't want a dirty laundry to this stuff, but like if they res a drafter here, we don't care. If they res a gatekeeper, it's fine. We want to get that res now. So we're just going to be pressuring. Why do we play that sure gamble first? If we access something, we want to trash it, we can. Enigma, annoying. That's fine. We break that for free. Uh, we can run R&D last click. I think we're going to creative commission. I think we've done enough damage this turn. If we run into a drafter last click, it's pretty bad for us. So we're just going to get that down. It's the whole like family. Yeah, maybe this person isn't an Ike. They're just like legitimately a Mike, right? Spin Doctor. Oh, where is the group over here? And an ice. Okay, so clearly something here matters. So we're going to run this. If they res, we can run this. Uh, we're not drawing. It's a problem. Probably have a pretty good joy right here if we can get it. But let's go see a magnet or something. Wrap. Nice. Okay. I never really knew you could run creative commission on anything but your last. Maybe you lose all your clicks. Reading cards. OP. Yeah, sometimes spending two clicks for four credits is niche. But sometimes it is correct. Like, you have to keep that in mind. Uh, this is probably Rashida. This is where we're having another pinhole is good. As much as we don't know which one to run. Okay. We could have considered Dirty Laundering there. YDL. Okay, so they're probably on Midnight 3 more than anything else. Draw. Uh, Baya Bands is weird because you want to do it with Swift, but it also could get the Swift down. So I think we don't show the Swift. I think we just draw once more because we need to get deeper. And then next turn we'll do Swift Baya Bands Archives, which seems fine. That's like a lot of click compression, Swift Baya Bands. That's kind of really cool. We should try Ken out. I think Ken's better than Ken looks. Okay, that's not that bad for us. It's a 3-2, obviously, to get their turn back, but they added a hedge fund. They can't play the... They have to play the Yodel here, and it's pretty shit. And they can't ice R&D. Like, we get away with murder here. I thought they were going to seamless uh, off-roll. This is, like, as good as Luminal is, going down to one credit on Luminal is not stellar. Okay, so we know YDL in hand. That could be Rashida worst case. On two credits, the only ice that this could possibly be that would blow us out is uh is ablative. Oh, it could be a wraparound, actually. This is a bit risky. If the buy bands doesn't connect, we're kind of messed up. Okay, luckily. Draw two. Okay. I uh, install the simul chip, only legal target, hedge fund. This has to be Rashida for it to be good. I think we compile the remotes over here. And we just go get our um, our Gauss, right? Yeah, I think we can't let this remote server go through. Compile's kind of cool. And in theory, we can simul chip the, the Gauss, which actually might be correct. So we'll go for our stack. We'll get a Gauss. We'll break for one. Uh, we should have sure gambled here first. 
In fact, we probably could have even, uh, what's it called? Yeah, this is a mistake. We should have sure gambled first for sure. Because we're not going to have a lot of money here. Uh, they can res a mana garm. Uh, I don't think we simul chip the Gauss. It's nice to have it. It looks like they're pretty lean. Yeah, here we should have sure gambled first. So we're going to spend two clicks. Yeah, and I'm doing good. How are you doing? Do we simul chip the Gauss? I think we do. Huh? Why can't I? Oh, because there's no legal targets. Oh, annoying. Okay. Let's hit the Rashida. It's a Trank grid. Um, That's a bummer. We know they're drawing to a hedge fund. I think... I think we have to trash this and not the other one. We can recover from this board state, but they can't. Yeah, we have no legal targets, yeah. Yeah, trash the Trank, they have no credits, yeah. I'd rather trash the Trank. Like, we know this is a wraparound mana garm, so, like, we just run early. All right, uh, three cards they could res here. Draw, draw. Telework's okay, we'll Dirty Laundry Archives, it's clickless. We can Dirty Laundry R&D, but it's a bit too risky. So they have a Yodel in hand. I think we could run R&D here, but if a Drafter fires, it's really bad because they get the Trank back. So I'm just gonna do Telework hit Telework, which is a bit slow. This The faster line, which maybe we wanna be fast here, is draw sure gamble, that's fine too. Yeah, okay. Yeah, Kat, how are you doing? How's the end of the year looking for you? Hopefully work is a bit better after the strike. They'll play the hedge fund. Okay, so they have YDL in hand. That's all we know. Uh, we need to draw into an SMC or something. We have our Asana. We haven't used our Asana a lot. We have a deep dive. Okay, so we want to get down. We have one click gainer. We want to get a second click gainer down. We have Ika, which means we can face check. Ika's five credits to get through, mind you. We want to force an R&D res um, sooner than later. And we can overclock, get the Ika down if we really wanted to. We here... We need to go deeper through our deck. We don't need a Swift, so we can draw to seven, install a card, no problem. Diesel's good for next turn, so double simul chip is a bit much. We need an SMC for this to pop off. Uh, we're assuming they're playing on Ikua, so having um, a lot of click gainers is super important. I think getting the telework is fine. We didn't fire Swift this turn, but we didn't have a really good reason to. All right, so they have Yodel in hand, and that's all we know. They're drawing. This seems like an ugly draw here, but they might do like draw spin doctor. They have a six card hand size, so they can do this. But like here they've gone through, what is it? 18 cards. We've seen one agenda. They haven't shuffled any back. So just running HQs here is really important. Remote server also obviously is pretty good. Uh, okay, so we have ways to deal with this. So now we can dirty laundry server one. We probably overclock server one. We do SMC for Gauss, which is fine. And then we simultaneously for SMC. But I think we need to contest this. We in theory can get... We're actually kind of set up to deep dive next turn if we really want to, because we have SMC for Pichachon. We have a click gainer from Swift, so we have two click gainers, which means we do run, 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 get you back. We have three clicks left, right? That's like get to five points. But we need to do double deep dive to try and win. Uh, having Kira, what's it called? The hand would be really good. I think we're going to overclock the server. I guess we can telework first. Oh, and then, yeah, we'll overclock the server. So here we'll use Ari to install the SMC. We'll crack the SMC for our pocket money to get down a Gauss. Uh, Gauss will be installed. We'll break. Sorry, we'll encounter. We got a click back. Break and the run. Cool. Uh, I think. What else do we do on a turn? I think we do two clicks here. Our clicks are worth four credits, so yeah. Rashida, nice. This Kong works nice. And then we'll just simul chip the SMC in. Because we trashed something this turn. Nice, we're doing okay. We're trucking along. We have to run HQ. They're definitely flooded. Uh, the problem is like, how quickly do we get SMC into Enigma is pretty good if we want to pull an Euler because we break this for free. And then I think that's what we do next turn is we into the depths HQ. We actually can consider going for a deep dive this upcoming turn. It's predicated on what R&D is. But here we have the econ hand. I think we actually do go for it. We do into the depths HQ. No, sorry, because then we have to crack the SMC. We might want to into the depths R&D. They have a lot of money. We haven't seen any of the bigger stuff. Ron, uh, yeah, no, of course. But the remote server is totally falling apart and they're pretty flooded. We just need to get an access on HQ. We know they have a YDL. Again, they've gone through, mind you, it's only 18 agenda point decks, so they've only gone through 14 cards. I think I said the numbers wrong, but 
Very noteworthy. They're playing 44, right? Because this is 38 on the table. Yeah, 44. They're running Ikwa at a click plus two to their deep dive math. Yeah, for sure. Um, so like we really need Hannah to go off on the, the huge deep dive turn to win a single turn. So we're more likely to do multiple deep dives. Okay, so we should run this. Um, we don't know what the outermost is. We have no idea what the outermost. David, it's going so cool so far. We have like a, an aggressive deep dive Arasana deck. As much as this is turn seven, this is our born state, but don't worry about that. So this looks like an agenda. It's probably an agenda. We get through this. The question is, how do we get through this? MIC is like pretty good because we pull through it relatively easy with this. Uh, I think what we want to do is we want to telework and just charge the server. If it's a high strength code gate, we SMC for it relatively well. We might not have enough money. And then once we break this server, we can run HQ for free with uh, the dirty laundry into the depths. The other option is like, Eek in the run, we don't we don't have to, right? Because we can install Eka from hand with Arisana. But yeah, having the Eka means we are not worried about the face check too bad. So I think we run here. And then hopefully we get down our uh, Gauss, and then we can Gauss run HQ. Click list so we have dirty laundry user depth. Gatekeeper, okay. So we got to do the math here. So we pull out Gauss for four, goes as a five. We actually might not have enough money for this. This firing is really bad. We might have wanted to dirty laundry archives. I think I should have done some math before we'd done this. So just to check, Gauss comes in for four, right? Gauss comes in for four, and then we have to boost, fuck, to three, to five, to seven. So we have to pay 10 to get through this. Yeah, we need the dirty laundry archives. This is really bad. We can still get back, but now they're gonna fix their HQ, which is not good. Yeah, we should have done math whether this was a gatekeeper. So I think that has to fire, right? Oh, uh, wait, no, we can slap vandal this. I think we slap vandal this then. I forgot we added one. Because this is obviously an agenda. We can only break one server team, but we'll do the one that matters. So here they'll fix their hand. It's a bit unfortunate, but it is what it is. The slap vandal now is going to be stuck here unless we get more simul chips down, which we have one in hand because we don't have UAV. So they actually drew. So I guess they're going to shuffle. I think we're going to see two agendas go back. Just one Ikua, okay. Unfortunately, well, at least this gatekeeper will be cheap later, but yeah, we can't run HQ this turn. Yeah, Midnight 3 makes sense. They're on YDL. So we haven't done a run yet with Swift, so I reckon we should. I think we'll just Dirty Laundry Archives. I thought we'd be able to enter the depths or Dirty Laundry HQ because I thought we'd produce our decoder, but no dice. You were looking at Gauss instead of the Euler, I believe. Gatekeeper's a code gate. Wasn't I looking at Euler? Oh, you're right. I was looking at Gauss. You're right. Euler. It would still be bad, but not as bad. It would be eight credits. Oh, shit. We could have done it. Yeah, we could have done it. I think that's actually better. Yeah, you're right. I was looking at the wrong one because this comes in at six strength this turn. Yeah, we messed that up. I think we definitely could have done it. Here we could show a simul chip. The simul chip... Like we could deep dive next turn, we just don't have enough money. So next turn we have to start with the telework contract. That's a bit annoying about this telework. Maybe daily cast would be better because this again is eight credits in four clicks as opposed to five for one click. And actually like the problem with telework is we can't telework the turn that we deep dive too aggressively. I'll get the simul chip down for some pressure. Yeah, we could have got in there. We were credit perfect. Here they skate at us. We. Hey Nana, you awake? So now it's hard for them to jam their remote server every turn because we checked the server for two credits. And in fact, we actually can make money on the server with Into the Depths. YDL, icing up R&D. Okay, so they're playing around deep dive. I wonder if they see with the Swift coming, but at least here we can continue to set up. So draw. Uh, Polongi is okay. It's definitely okay. We draw one some more. Okay, slow down there. Uh, we could make a run. I think we just play the Polongi. If they purge, we're fine with it. They probably are running Mavirus. At the end of the day, I think that's okay. I think the flexibility of this is pretty good. But not a great turn. That was not a fantastic turn. That didn't feel like anything unfair. We have to check, like, how many times are we using our Asana? Like, would we strictly be better as Lat? Maybe. We've been using our Asana in the turns that we really need her. It's just we're not using her every turn, like most other run-based Arasana decks. And that's interesting, at least. But Mike has a problem here. Because like if they want to get a second ice here, they can obviously over-install the gatekeeper. It's nice to have the simul chip there to respond to it. Oh, they went for the wraparound. Okay. 
Yeah, that's okay. That's better. They're both one credit. And this actually has subroutines. So they could jam here. Hedge fund? They don't jam. Oh, they don't jam. That's huge. We get a window. Do you think Dao might be a good idea for the style? The problem is we're already playing 48 cards. Uh, Dao might be okay. Dao might be okay. We have to find an SMC or something. Creative? Okay. All right, we can dirty laundry clicklessly. It's fine. Um, I wonder if we should just simul chip for our simul chip for our SMC. Like here, running HQ is such a high chance of being good that I think we should just trash the plongy to get our, our thing down. I think we do. We also could consider into the depth thing the remote server last turn to play a run event to get our breaker on the table. That actually would have been way better. Is that we could have into the depth this, paid three, got four back, and got our decoder down, and then we'd still have the simul chip. I think that was actually a really good play, is a heads up plays running this remote server to get the money and to get our decoder down. Because having our decoder here, especially because we run Enigma for one credit, um, seems really good. So unfortunately, we're going to have to use our simul chip for our, uh, to trash this slap bundle. Yeah, that's fine. That's actually kind of fine. So let's go. We have a click and two credits here, so we're going to do simul chip. We'll trash the slap. We'll get down our uh, SMC. SMC we will use for uh, Euler. Euler will break all subroutines for free this turn. And so we can get a bunch of axes on HQ here. Break fully for zero is a cool sentence. We have a click and two credits. Big deal. I guess we're running back. I don't want it into the depths. I want to keep a run event for the deep dive train. Come on. Shit. I think we'll trash this and we'll creative. They can't big deal this turn. The deck runs one of them, right? But now the remote server is relatively cheap. Uh, Euler is not free anymore. We can run HQ for one credit. We play two SMCs, so we don't have the flicker effect anymore. I think we botched this. We should have done that a turn or two sooner, and that would be good. I can't believe we didn't find an agenda there again. Uh, we've seen two agendas and 21 cards. They shuffled back one Aqua. Here, ideally, we force them to res, which would be pretty good. What's the worst case they score out? Seamless. This we break for one or two. MICs would be kind of ugly. Hey, Maddie, how's it going? Uh... Oh, we haven't seen a drafter yet. Drafter, mind you, is pretty expensive on five credits. I think we just continue to set up and ignore them. PJ Sean last turn would be pretty good, too. Funny enough, it's when you pass the ice, so you can lose the click, gain the click, right? Like, you can play around this last click. I think running HQ still makes sense, as long as we have a run event to make it make sense. We don't. That is unfortunate. We could into the depths HQ right here. It's more likely they score out an off world office. If they score out a midnight three ecology and spend money on it, like it's fine. But if we enter the depths HQ here, right? It costs us one, two credits. We gain four, but we play the run event for the turn. We still haven't seen Hannah. We have a Peach of Sean we can install from hand. I think that's probably worth it. It just sucks that, like, how many more run events do we have? That's a big question. We have no more dirty laundries. We have two more overclocks. We have one compiled to buy events. I think we can afford it. I think the access here is really good. We have to make sure we're playing the matchup to some extent, right? So we'll enter the depths HQ. The problem with the Peach of Sean is they might like trash it. I think getting the Ika down is maybe a bit better. Ah, eh, whatever. So we'll break this for two. We could have ran a click later. That's fine. Gain a click. No, because it doesn't work. We thought it does. It doesn't. Gain four. Install program from your stack. We don't actually need any programs. YDL. Okay, the one card we knew, unfortunately. Okay, so I think we just do sure gamble. We run back for a single. Actually, there's two cards we knew. A single for one credit here seems fine, especially because we get the click back. Fully break Enigma? Oh, ugly. Euler, no. I didn't realize it was two. I thought you could break one for one. Apparently this is two for two. Great. We'll trash the big deal if we see it. Yeah, okay. 
Maybe we don't need to. I'll click for credit here. Our money's not been amazing. Hopefully they overextend here and score out of Midnight 3. Your video yesterday was very interesting. Oh, Rashid, that's bad. I'm wondering how the one agenda five cards applies after a deep dive. On the spot, you get some info about agenda density in R&D, and you can always change the density after stealing. Yeah, and so like anytime you attack R&D directly, that's the big problem with deep dive, though, is like you can't lock the deck because it shuffles after. So you have an idea of how many agendas are in the game. I don't think it entirely changes. You do get a glimpse of the R&D density, but like if you see three off the deep dive, the chance of them being an HQ is pretty likely, unlikely. Oh, they're in 20 credits. I feel like we were just one or two clicks too slow here. I guess Swift refunding your click before the run starts, so it doesn't force speed to channel. Yeah, that's what the rules team said. It's not before the not during the run, so P Sean doesn't get returned by necessity. All right, well, they're not jamming. We got one big deal. They might be on another. Uh we need to get down like our next telework, I think. Cause man, I should just leave my face here, I think. It's real frustrating on JNet. No good way. Yeah, I think we just need to get another telework down. Creative last click is fine. Uh, Nuka is fine. Didn't play a run event. It's okay. We can now that we're on two points, though, if we do set up a deep dive, we win on a single deep dive. So it's not too worrisome. The problem is we just need enough money. They haven't done anything unfair yet. Here they could, in theory, big deal. Uh, I don't know what we're worried about them. If they big deal out of Vitruvius with a counter, that's a problem. I guess with a couple counters. Spin Doctor. Yeah. I can't believe they're not flooded. They probably are flooded. But uh, our HQ axes have been really surprising considering how far into the game it is. Even also getting down like an SMC or a what's it called is important because they have to play around clot to some extent. We have one simul chip, two SMCs, and we have the MU for one SMC more. We also have to watch out like we haven't seen them. They could have perched out in theory. Like Polongi is scary, but if they get him a virus on the table, we can't count on the Polongi. Why do you have more money? Yeah, I'm worried about a big deal. That's fine. Nuka, get some economy. Okay, so this is the sort of hand we need to win the game. The compile hits nothing? The compile hits an SMC potentially. The problem is we just don't have straight up money here. So in our bottom 14, we have two Nuka. We have a Telework. Uh, we can consider buy a bands for free is kind of nice. I think we're doing the buy a bands and just hope that we hit an installable card. I think that's kind of fair. We can install the Ika from our hand for free. I think it's okay. It gums up our MU, so we get an SMC down. But at this point, SMC doesn't actually have any targets, I don't think. I think the compile's useless, besides the heap. And again, in the heap, we have a slap vandal. That's something. Can we charge the server? I think our breakers are super limited. Breach. We'll draw two. We have to hope that we get down here. Um, uh, yeah, Hannah. Stall card for one viewer. So we can do a simul chip, we can do Hannah. Let's do Hannah. We need Hannah. We can now use Hannah to run the remote server. Even if they don't trash this, it's fine. Because we will. To some extent, forcing of the shovel here is bad. <laughs> they could forget, potentially. But we didn't draw any economy with that, which sucks. Oh, we should have got Ika down, maybe off the Hannah, yeah. I can still respond to this. Uh, during... I will... Uh, uh, Ari. So I'm in theory during that run, I'll just do it. So I'll just do it on archives, but in theory, you can still respond to the spin doctor. We have priority. We're just gonna get the eco down. And we'll just check out. It's fine. Okay. Um, so we have all our breakers here. Simul chip on the table gives us access to not a lot. Oh, slap bandle isn't fine. And then the problem here is we just don't have enough money. So I do not think, well, for what it's worth, actually, like. Or their simul chip can get pretty far. This is where you want a cyber trooper tat loot. Because I don't think they have any code gates underneath two strength. Like, we're expecting magnets. We break magnet for one. But there's a small chance that we can pop off this turn. We might have not wanted to credit there. We have to see how many creatives we have. If we have more creatives, we have all three creatives are played. All three dirty laundries are played. All three sure gambles are played. So the only econ in our deck is one more telework. I don't think we're on full three. We might be able to squeeze out a win here. Looks like an upgrade in server one. Uh, no, you're good. Nah. They look like they're going to big deal. Um, hmm. Still good. Got to pretend like you're thinking. If they big deal here and go down to no money, like, then we deep dive super easily. So I think they will a big deal here. Unless they're baiting us. Oh, they did big deal. Sick. They're down to five credits. We actually have a huge window here. I don't know if they're going to score out. Ikawa, fine. Fantastic. 
So they're on five credits. They could win with an audacity next turn, but on five credits, I don't know how they res ice. They added a YDL to hand. Okay, good. We have a window to pop off. So we want to start by overclocking R and D. I think them scoring out a big deal was probably not great for them. Obviously, it's a bit scary to be on the remotes over here, but on five credits, they can res one ice. So that means we overclock. If we had another Hannah in hand and the Baya bands, we could have gotten for, but I think we only need to get an access with three clicks, which is totally possible. So we're going to start by running R&D. It's a server we have the least information about. We're going to see how it works. We have to remember that we're going to flicker the Euler because that's the most powerful card this turn, especially if we see a magnet. And then we have Euler Plongi, which breaks a uh, drafter for free. Wait, if they don't res, are we sad that we play the overclock here? I don't think so. We can still use these credits to uh to trash things, I guess. We needed to play it. Drafter. Okay, cool. So they're on two credits, which means the only other ice they can res is a Gauss, or sorry, it's a, a bladed barrier. So here we have to do a couple things. Firstly, we're going to simul chip. We're gonna trash the oiler. We're gonna reinstall the oiler. We're gonna make this. We'll do that in a minute. We'll Arasana. We'll get a Peach of Sean down. We'll host it on the drafter. Paying from pocket. We actually didn't need to do the Euler flick because we had money in the bank. That's fine. So we'll continue encountering. We'll make this a code gate. We'll break it for one. Ari the Ika, 100%. Oh, Ari the Ika? Wait. You might be behind Ari. In theory, we also could have like moved the Peach Sean to HQ if we just wanted to break this with credits. That might have been fine. Reach server. Okay, if we don't steal this, we can steal it on the deep dive. Because uh, we know that's an upgrade. We. Okay. <laughs> they go out, but, oh, but we could have got on the deep dive. You know how sick that would have been? I'm doing well, Pink. How are you doing? So they can only res a two cost ice here. That would probably be uh, an ablative barrier, which has kind of fallen out of the meta pretty hard. Some chip for flipping the Oilers very worth it. Yeah, it's very, very good. The thing is, like, if they had more money, it's even better. Here, it saves us a bit of credits because we break the Enigma for free. Get something else on the deep dive? We can only hope. Ah. Crash that. Run archives. We actually could run our uh, server one here. We know it's an upgrade, but you technically could. Uh, so we'll do this. And we'll deep dive. And we can still steal a lot. Uh, okay. So we'll steal the Midnight 3. Spend a click. Steal the Offworld Office. This is what the deck wanted to do. We did okay. We got to 9 points. A good game. Yeah, I think them big dealing down if they saw us as a deep dive deck and then having no ice on centrals. That's the only way that they don't lose. That they can make us spend more money here. Because we didn't have a lot of money to work with. Yeah, right? You were drawing hard. So I decided to go HQ. And was so shocked to find nothing. Like, yeah, they were like 20 cards into the deck and we ran HQ multiple times. We saw nothing. Uh, it was really weird. They didn't have agendas. I think it was strange. Yeah. They can't raise MIC now. Yeah, if they raise MIC, like, it's not that expensive, but if they actually use the click drain from us, it's kind of annoying. Odd. I'm good, thank you. Hey, good to hear. I love how most deep dive turns start with finding agendas but when you run all three central servers. But yeah, I know it's always so disappointing when you run HQ and you win. Hey, thanks for the game. Okay, so the deck is doing slightly more than we think it's going to. Like it's doing okay. I think having the Talu down might be a bit too much. Having access to the Slap Vandal is kind of cool because we had lines to set up a bit sooner. I think we did deep dive two turns too slow, unfortunately, because we missed that we had a really nice two ice uh, remote over push. The compile is also looking like kind of extra. It's not looking like the most necessary card in the deck. It's nice to have one because it buys you some sort of reach, but I don't think it's like incredibly important. I don't know if y'all agree with me. Like it doesn't feel necessary, but it feels fine. Uh, we did use the compile in the early game though, and like it feels okay, but I could see us cutting down to one. I also don't think we just have the money there. Like, is telework better than daily cast? Because like, that's a problem. It's hard to use telework on the turn you deep dive. So let's cut a compile. He's going to say that and then he'll pay another telework. SMC is good. Peach Sean's good. Palangi, Ika, Gauss. The simul chips seem amazing. I think we could play another pinhole, but I don't want to play a 49 card deck. 
Won't the deck be better with Lat? We filed, fired Arisana in that game like three times. It probably will be better with Lat. It probably will be. Let's try it. I'm not happy about it, but it could be. We'll ship our Theseus into another deck. <laughs> Does that mean that we don't play the Slap Vandal? I think it cuts the Slap Vandal. Plonga, Ika, Gauss, Euler, Nuka, Hannah, Telework, Swift, Simulchip. Yeah, maybe it is. We'll try that. Now we have to match hand size. Card draw is nice, obviously. Uh, but we'll see. We'll see. I think Arasana gives us a bit more flexibility. And I, I'd argue in those games we didn't play perfectly. Second pin I think second pin was right, but I don't want to play 48 cards. Like, I think it's the sort of thing that we'll cut down and figure out where it goes into the deck. Uh, but I don't, I'm not excited to play 48 cards just to put the pinhole in. As much as we probably should cut something to put the pinhole in, I just don't think we're comfortable enough to know what we should cut just yet. But yeah, second pinhole for one influence is really good. It's a run event. It's just on its own pretty good. Nobody plays Euler. Euler's kind of fun. Like, Euler actually has some cool stuff to it. A better killer? Oh, Andrea, you're right. The killer we're playing is Ika. That is an artifact of the old deck. I think you're right. We probably should be playing non-Ika. Uh, because we don't have that Trojan synergy anymore. Hey, Armin. I feel like Lat will force you to make difficult decisions with the Pichichon. Yeah, I think there's going to be some restriction. Like, I think the Pichichon is just so easy to play. Uh, the problem is, like, we played once. And it's the sort of deck which I don't love, where like your idea ability only matters once or twice, but when it matters, it really matters, right? Like the Iswak problem. Uh, if that's the case, maybe Lat will be less good, but I think Lat will obviously fire more than Arasana will. It's just like, will that card draw be more important than having a combo? Yeah, I think uh, Ika is strange for sure. Opening hand, so no idea what it is. Could be fast events. We have Dirty Laundry Swift, but otherwise I don't like this hand. We're gonna mull. That's a lot better. I don't know what Armin's playing. We don't have imp for the six shooter. Uh, no, we don't. We only have one influence. The six shooter's not bad. It's like a pretty good spin doctor. What is this? Armin kept. This is where you have a pinhole, right? That looks like Rashida. Armin malt. Okay. Weird. I think we do sure gamble. I think we just do Baya. I don't think we do diesel. We can get an access on HQ, see what this is. We can consider contesting this. We'll draw two. Uh, that's not great because this won't fire. I think we actually install, yeah, whatever. We can do it. Konjin. Okay, so they're playing big ice. That's not great. This means they're definitely playing like 3x Anansi. On nine creds, we don't really want to face check. Uh, yeah, here we would love. So if we, we've already played a run event, so Swift, it won't fire. Because it doesn't care about since it's been down, it means since the beginning of the turn. I'll just put that on SMC. If it's Rashida there, it's really bad, yeah. We could consider face checking again. Ika, Scythe, and Don. This is the sort of matchup, too, where we're going to feel the pain of playing an Ika uh, because there's probably a lot more sentries. I'm assuming they're on at least six sentries, which is pretty high. Could you have triggered Lat there? Oh, yeah, I totally forgot we're playing Lat, 100%. Sorry, uh, you should remind me. It's going to take a bit of a... Uh, what's it called? Uh, memory. We should have installed the simul chip. They were on four cards in hand, right? Yeah, 100% we should have triggered Lat there. I'm still Aris on it to the gills. So Regolith, Vovo, nice. Okay, so they're going to be all about ice. So we're going to lose the game, same idea. Ice are going to go from R&D to HQ and the remote server. We know the Konjin could be either of these. Konjin on the outermost. Okay, now they also have three cards, so they had three cards. Okay, I think we'll just Dirty Laundry HQ. It's like a super tempo positive play. We could draw first here. It's nice to get, you know, information. If we trash this, they go down to two cards. There goes Lat. Uh, but we don't have a reason to contest this. We have a reason to contest this, but we need to get our setup. Ika's going to be really bad at this matchup. Draw. So we could do install, install. We're not going to get our lat draw here. This seems a bit more important. Next, they jam their mode server. We've seen Konjin, which on the outermost on server one doesn't do anything. So it's probably an R&D or an HQ, unless they're setting up for a couple turns and they're just doing what they have to do. Would you have four six, uh, four to the face truck Morris ice in this game? I think hitting a size and town just loses the game. Fuck. Lose hitting an Anansi also just kind of is really, really bad early game. So arguably, but also maybe not. I don't know. 
Your R&D HQ remote mantra reminds to say great job on the fundamentals. Thanos, thank you. Glad you liked that. I think that turned out pretty well. So we know nothing about HQ. We could check if it makes sense for us. It doesn't. Hey, Lynn Miller, it's been a minute. I haven't been able to catch the streams live lately. I can't head for long now, but I wanted to pop in and say hey and send my well wishes. Hopefully you're doing well too. Yeah, I haven't seen you around in a while. Hopefully everything's going well. Thanks for taking the time to pop in. Looks like a fun matchup. Jason, how's it going as well? Uh, we've just started. <laughs> Stop putting a great. Uh, we're a deep dive deck, and I think they saw our, our number. Uh, this is hard. We don't have that robust of a rig, right? Like, we want to pop off soon. And I think, like, the Jinteki Ice is going to be a problem. Like, we just don't... Like, Ika, imagine they have two centuries on R&D. Like, we're kind of cooked. We shouldn't have Ika in the deck. That's a middle finger in R&D, yeah. And if they know we're deep dive, like, they just have to ice up this anyways. Like, they don't have to ice up everything. Shape or you problems. Uh, so it's in our best interest to, like, set up as soon as possible. Like, why are we drawing? Wave Nuka. Sorry. <laughs> Lamau, yeah. Obviously, we learned information, but there's no reason we don't nuka there. Thanks. Let's try that again. I got distracted by the nice folks in chat. Okay. So, that's a bit better. Two cards in hand and nuka. It's not going to work. Um... This is for what it's worth, like, Arsan is kind of cool. As long as you have money, like, they can just overclock and an SMC comes down from hand. Like, that's worth something, as much as the remote server hasn't there. We still got Plongi, we run into double sentry. Yeah, we do. We know they're on a virus. We obviously do. But, like, here we just need to set up for the late game, and we're not good at late game breaking ice. Like, we don't have Turbine, we don't have Talute. So what are we doing here? We can discard uh, the Swift for sure. Peach Sean's also less good to play on tempo. Uh, we can nuke again, go to 10 cards, install two, go to eight, discard three. I think Hannah's kind of important. If we can get one deep dive off, that's how we win. This is where you want Teleworks. You want to sit back and just be like, okay, I'm ready for war. So I don't think we're going to do much here. I think we were kind of set up. The only thing that's really gaining us is credits. So I think we're just going to do credit, credit. It's kind of slow, but whatever. I recently introduced a long-term partner of mine to Netrunner. Very casual kitchen table play in your videos about fundamentals and your deck decks have been great research. Thank you for your work you do. Oh, that's very kind. I'm so stoked to hear that folks can get more of the game. Um, it's obviously, I think this game is pretty swell. And I'm, I'm, it's intimidating. I'm glad people can, you know, get more into this. That's really awesome. Hopefully you and your partner are enjoying it, eh? Vob was over there. So they have something they want to res a bit cheaper. They're going to save four credits here. That means a non use for six. Do we overclock this? This could be a Rashida. We haven't seen their hand, so we don't know if they're on Seamless. Hannah contests the overclock. I think we can consider it. Ah, if we overclock, I think we just start your laundry archives overclock. We need to force them to spend some sort of money. Ideally, we trash Vobo because we don't want them to res ice and then move Vobo over. So I'll go for it. Lat's been abysmal this game, but Armin's been doing a good job making that the case. Tattoo, expecting that. Full art coming soon to a table near you. Okay. Big Gauss. Get your money. Here they can also do a trick, so ideally you want to run sooner in the turn than later, because they can swap and do an install. The chance of them having a swap here is kind of unlikely. We know the Konjin is either this or this or that. So they might not have an ice in hand with two cards in hand. Yeah, they don't. That's good. All right. Has anyone done the math here to see how expensive this is? We could SMC for a Polongi, which we break this for five. So we can SMC for a Polongi, which breaks this for five. In theory, they don't have a window to purge because as soon as we break, we have everything. The other idea is we SMC for Ika, which costs us two and four to host. What's the math on Ika? Uh, let's check real quick. I don't know. I don't use Ika that much. Uh, two and four to host. Five, six, seven, eight, two, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Two, sorry, two to host. Two to install, two to host. So it's two, four. Five, six for strength, seven, eight. So it's eight to do that. Otherwise, we can SMC for Polangi, which is three, and then we break five. So it's the same, right? Strategy against freedom as a Taya at UK Nazis to have an open HQ and no cards in it. Everything I went onto board, even after Rashida, seems similar. It didn't work. It was funny. Uh, if we spend eight, eight, eight here, uh, we access with enough money to trash Rashida and Vovo. I guess. It's weird that it allows you to do that, but I guess it understands that. 
Okay. Let's try that. Eventually we break this, you know, for four a pop. That's kind of unbelievably good. All right, we have exactly enough money to have nothing else going for us at this point in the board state. Pretty sick, if you ask me. Pretty chill. Do I want to simul chip for an SMC here? I'd argue that it's probably worth doing. Credit, credit. As overwrought as the text on simul chip is, it is much more of an interesting design. Mind you, clone chip back in the day just said install program from your heap. That's it. So this is kind of cool. I'd argue we overextended there, but I think denying the Rashida is probably worth a lot. I just don't know how we do that. He switched a lot into, into the Depths working for you. Um, yes, Into the Depths actually are feeling pretty good because we have Swift. But in turn, that's... It's too expensive to check. Feels like you need more money. Every time I turn back, we're flying around two mana. Yeah, um, we spend a lot on that run. The problem is, like, their ice is really big, and they actually force us to care about this. We might be able to deny it and run central servers. If that's an NGO front, obviously they have a lot more money here. If that's an off-world office, they'll have a lot more money next turn. But you're totally right. We just don't have a lot of money in the deck. Uh, ideally, with our Asana, we were expecting to fly a bit, like, closer to the ground and, like, cheat out oilers and stuff like that. But, like, at the end of the day, we just don't have a good answer to Anansi. Uh, that's difficult. Yeah, we're, we are so cooked, and we're going to lose really slowly. Overclock the remote server. Here, if it's an NGO front, like, we're so in a bad spot that I don't want to. Right? Like, Tatubola probably flips at this point. I don't know if it's worth it. Because this is 2, 3, 4. This is 5. It's, like, technically free. But if it's an NGO front, we kind of lose the game on the spot. It looks like an NGO front. Like, they have too little money. If it's an off-world office, it's bad for us. That's for sure. But I would be really surprised. But like, welcome to Click for Credit Town. We need more money in the deck for sure. Yeah, this is not good. We're not making any plays. This is where I get frustrated. Where like we have to, uh, they don't have to react to us. It's okay. We'll figure it out. Fuck. Are they impunitive? What is this? Can we have deep dove there? If it's an NGO front, no. We assumed it was an NGO front. A teeny. Yeah, that's pretty good. Uh, we can run HQ here, which is nice. So like now we can actually uh, into the depths HQ. Yeah, we both got God. I, I well played for Armin. That did not look like an agenda. But this is where it's good, right? They can't res. We'll gain the money. We'll see a surveyor. Oh, God. this is really bad for us. Three ice and R&D makes sense. This is probably a Jinja deck. I think they're on Jinja. Jinja Vova makes sense. Uh, Jinja, mind you, works with the Taya. In fact, Jinja is one of the reasons why the text on this is as weird as it is. Because otherwise you can Jinja the ice and then clicklessly install something here. I, I hate Jinja, but I'm pretty sure they're on Jinja Taya. Because imagine drawing a card, getting an ice install, and then clicklessly getting something on the table. Uh, you don't have time for it to be a Rashida, but you have time for it to be a Regolith. Like, it's really, really good. I, 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 I'm not a big Jinja fan because it's just like ice go burr, and I don't think that makes it an interesting game. You see what I mean here, right? Uh, we could deep dive with three clicks and win. We need double deep dive to win, though, because they're probably on as few agendas as possible. They don't have a play next turn, which is good. What did we just say? We saw Surveyor. At least they're not going to afford that anytime soon. So we'd have to make sure that we can pop off and win uh, in the next couple turns, which is honestly nearly possible. We're, like, not that far behind. We're actually, like, okay. Like, what do they do next turn? Click for three credits. On four credits, they can't rush shit. <laughs> Thinking. Um, we can overclock R and D. We break this for I think it's like two or four credits. Is a credit more than SMC? We're gonna need the SMC to go get our oiler. Then we can simul chip the SMC to go get a plong if we need to. Jeff, how's it going? Yo, how was Pax you, man? It's good to see you on stream yesterday. I was joking about your forty-five minute commute the same way Pat gets over here, but um, I'm glad you went out there. Can SMC for lat draw too? Oh yeah, lat draw. Uh, never mind. Lat has fired zero times this game. That's probably not going to I think we just need a credit. We could win next turn. Because they don't really have a play here besides like, if they have a regolith, oops. We know survey in hand. We know there's a Konjin somewhere on the table. Konjin is actually kind of messed up. At least if they res a Konjin, they don't have money to play the side game. We think one of these is a Konjin. It's probably this. 
My bad. Hey, no, we tried. I was not thinking about lat. I I, rec I um appreciate the uh, lat reminder. I'm like not in the lat headspace. Pax was a good time. Played John Company and it was a ton of fun. Also top probably ten people Netrunner. What's it like at the Netrunner booth? I, I swear I need to go out and teach Netrunner at a NSG event at some point. How long do you have to teach someone Netrunner? Like it's like a ten minute teach or like play a first game teach? Because like shout outs to be there all weekend. I heard Pax is really really crowded. Okay, that's a surveyor Volvo. Oh, fuck. Volvo. You absolute stinker. Okay. Do you think this ice costs four credits? I can't think of a Jatagi ice that costs four credits. Karuna? <laughs> Karuna. Yeah, that is a nice cost. I'd be surprised to see Karuna. Tattoo Bull is the most likely, which is fine. Unfortunately, it actually makes money for them, which is fine. Then we should run this last click. So the idea here is we run R&D, right? We SMC with the overclock, then we pull an SMC. We SMC for our Euler. Euler breaks a teeny for, I think, some credits. More than one, less than seven for three. So we pull out, it's one, two, three, four five, six, seven. So with the overclock, which gives us four credits, puts us on 13 minus seven, we're at seven. Let's go. Steal Fuji, lose two deep dive, cry. I've never been there before. Why would you res that? Okay. <laughs> uh, I should have seen it. They're on a surveyor deck. Uh, you play rhyme sometimes. Okay. So we break this for one. That puts us on less. Finally catching Michael. How's it going? Hopefully you're doing well. It's nice to meet you at Worlds. I probably said it already. I can't believe I ran into Michael and I didn't realize it was Michael. And then I, I was like, oh my God, you're Michael. Okay, so we have to pull out our Gauss anyways. Oh, it's two strength. That's why they did it. Right, 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 right. So we could flicker the Gauss. Euler and Polongi? I don't think it's cheaper. Ah, so we have nearly perfect information. The problem is that this innermost ice on HQ is another Tattoo Bula and they have another ice in hand. But currently we break this for three credits, which is obviously super, super cursed. So the only way that we can get through this is if we simul chip the Gauss and then we break this for one credit. That's something. So we're currently on 13. We would go down to 12, 11. Then we have to break this with 11 credits. How do we break this with 11 credits? It's two to pull out our breaker, three to boost, two more to install. So we go from 11, we pay two, seven. We go down to four. We have to break HQ for four credits. It's four to boost. Oh, fuck off. You're right. Yeah. Thank you. Stupid rhyme. Um, so then it's two four to boost. Okay, so that leaves us with like three credits. Can we run HQ for three credits? If rhyme misses up the mass, then all the rhyme fan credits celebrate for weeks. It's really doing a number here, but also like we're playing Gauss, which can you imagine a worse fractor here? This is pretty good rhyme value. Odds are slim for three tattoo bullets. You say that. Thimble rig is fine. Tattoo bull is the only blowout. Also, if Tattoo Bull swaps here, the math is all totally messed up. Then we can do... The problem is like we can't afford double deep dive. The rhyme is actually stopping us from affording double deep dive. More math. Because the only way we win is double deep dive. We can't overextend here. <laughs> HQ can now be a six cost dice. Yeah, if we go through this. So unfortunately here, we might have to overclock for the Euler. The problem is like we can't afford to overclock for the Euler because then... The Euler. Maybe we should have seen this in the Rhyme Tattoo Bowl because they didn't move the Bobo over. <laughs> we just need to figure out how to get SMC value. You can trash with Simul Chip, get back with the boost strength. Yeah, we could do the Simul Chip Gauss, and I think that's like reasonable. I think that's where we're predicating our math on. But this is just a math equation, so like we're going to be in the tank for a moment here. Sorry, Armin. But we could flicker this. Again, would Arisana be better to pull out the Simul Chip? Maybe. But if we flicker this Gauss, we break for one, we break for one. 
So that's one and two. And then again, we pull three, four of install, five, six for the SMC. Then we have to boost to six. So seven, eight, nine, ten. That leaves us with one credit. Did we mess the math up that bad? So one, two. And then this is install is four. Then we have to do boost, which is eight. So this is eight, nine, ten. We currently have 13. Eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. One, two. So sorry about this. Three, four, five, six. Seven, eight, nine, ten. That leaves us with three credits. So how much of Palongi has to be cheaper here, right? For what? I don't think it'll be cheaper. Because no matter what, we have to boost into this thing. That's the problem. SMC Gauss and break tattoo with Gauss. SMC Gauss? We have the simul chip Gauss, right? Sorry, even more math. Use Gauss to go through the whole server? I don't think it is, because the Gauss will come down to be four strength, and then we're breaking this for two. Oh, shit. Okay, so if we... Okay, let's, let's say we simul chip Gauss. Okay, so we simul chip Gauss, we break this for one, we lose one, so we're down two. Then we SMC for Palangi, which is three credits, so we spend one, two, three, four, five. Then this will come in, it'll be at four strength, five, so then we have to Palangi it, okay. And then we're at six, seven. Because you have to boost once. Eight, nine, ten. It's the same. It's the exact same. This is threat three. I think it's the exact same. <laughs> so sorry. <laughs> yeah, because I think that's one, two, and then we have to boost once, which is three, four, and we have to break five, six, seven. So it's seven, and then we pull ten. So it's 10 if we go that line, and then we're weak to this being uh, a thimble rig, I guess. Palangi and bin? No. No Palangi and bin. We have to pull it, which makes it expensive. Uh, otherwise, so that's 10. Otherwise, we uh, flicker this, break for one, break for two, and then we pull out the breaker, which is four. So we're at six. We boost four. So it's the same. Yeah, if it was in the bin, you're right. It saves us a, a fair bit. But then we have to flicker this one. So actually, I don't even know if it works there. So the problem is that we can get them with three credits. We have four clicks. We do run, run. We have three clicks. Then we're just one credit short. We're literally one credit short here. The problem is that we bounce, we lose all this overclock value. So we have to figure out how to use the overclock value, but not like get absolutely blown out here. And then their option is Ika Gauss. I don't think that's a real option here. I think we just lick our wounds and unfortunately lose the four credits off of overclock. Technically five credits. If we SMC for the Euler, it's pretty bad. We don't want to do that because then we don't have the Euler on the turn. That's the most important. Bounce out Tats and Trash Vovo. Yeah, I think that's the best case. Is that we do that. Let Teeny Fire once will hit SMC Trust. Holy shit. You're not wrong. We could always let it fire once and go for the one and three. If it's the deep dive, we're cooked anyways. I think we should have learned that we're only going to win by getting one good run. I think we're just going to let this fire. I think we let this fire. Is there anything we want to pull with the SMC? We have a slap vent. Whoa, we have a slap vandal. Eh, that's not good, is it? No, we cut the slap vandal. It's, so it's really not good. How much is Ika Palangi? It's a lot. Because we have to move the Ika. We have to boost boost because it's six strength. It's really bad. <laughs> Two, four. It's really, really bad. When I get Euler, we can flicker it later. Oh, uh, hold on. Actually. Actually. Yeah, we should. And then we just have access to simul chip. I think you're right. Yeah, we probably should just flicker it. It's so funny how that turn took three years and we still did it wrong. Wow. So we'll do SMC. Yeah, I think we should just... It's it's We have an simul chip. It's fine. It's whatever. This is free. Okay. So I think we run HQ here. Hopefully you can't res. There's a tattoo below we bounce, but we have to deal with the Boba as much as they don't have ice on the table. Getting an access here is okay. All we needed in hand is an event that gave us clicks or credits. <laughs> the res is a mistake for real?
We knew what that was. Why bounce a tattoo Gauss can handle without rhyme? Uh, it costs three credits. We don't want to break for three credits, right? Because it's now two strength. Well, shit. We could have won. Do we go back in HQ? What do we think the other card is? Let's draw for a run event. Oh, it's there. Oh, that being in hand <laughs> stinks. I check HQ. Yeah, we're going to go back for HQ. They can't red, so I can draw into a run event here. No. Okay. HQ is Conjun. The HQ ice has to be Conjun. Yeah, totally right. We know all the ice on the table. So whatever they draw, it just goes on remote server. No decisions to be made. But we did not make enough money that turn. I think we were hoping for an Into the Depths or something there. God, this control button is so good. Thank you, Rai. Uh, we have one Into the Depths. Oh, two Dirty Laundries are out there. We probably should just be clicking for credits. So we're blown up. That's Rashida. They're on three points, though. So advance events is what they have to do to get value. Um, Okay. So we flicker this. Stupid rhyme. Imagine we hush the rhyme. <laughs> the problem is we have to flicker both of these, right? Like, this is three. Ah, this sucks. This stinks. Let's draw for money. Come on. All right. I think we throw out the plongy, right? Hush rhyme. That's the tech. You're telling me. I think we throw out the plongy. It's better the simul chip. At least we have a second simul chip. No Rashida. They just have to jam everything. I think there's a ginger in there. Nice job on the replay review, by the way. Thank you, Jeff. Appreciate it. Um, I had to record that one twice. It took a while to get it through. We have another one coming for sure. Um, I'm happy with how it turned out. The feedback's been really positive. Thank you, everyone who watched it and enjoyed it. Okay. Four credits. This is a Kojin. The problem with Kojin, too, is like it's random how we get through it. We just sometimes don't get through it, uh, which is really difficult. We have to w run this and win the side game. And if we don't win the side game, right, like they have to choose between end the run ice and like an Anansi. And that's really tricky. Like Kojin into a surveyor is really, really hard. I think we have to just set up on three credits. Like where's the Conjun? Then it's only a 50 50, but I think we have to get the simul chip down. Lat's been an absolute disaster. We have a run event that might be worth keeping in hand. Otherwise we can click to gain three credits by running archives. I'd argue we don't need a run event anymore. It'd be nice to play two deep dives, but we can always play a single deep dive and then a second deep dive as, or have two clicks for any of the first deep dives. I'd like to access everything else. Maya bands might be correct here. Let's just set up that we can contest. Every time I see a side game card, ooh, Lacosta, not what I was expecting. I have to check if I need the same or different not trigger effect. Very silly mechanics. It's unfortunate that it's all over the place. Unless that's an NGO friend, we can consider running HQ here. Do y'all think we run HQ? How are we doing with the quality life stuff on Jaden? Like labels, Connor, this is not, oh, it was an NGO front. That's a bummer, so they jam. This is all a, a plugin called Cyberfeeder. Um, what's the left to pull with SMC? That's a good question. I didn't consider that. It's called Cyberfeeder. It's only for Firefox. Rahi made it. Uh, it allows you to give a lot of control over what Jnet looks like. If you search Firefox Cyberfeeder, you find the plugin, but it gives you all this control to like animations and text and sorting the bin, stuff like that. Can't recommend it enough. Only for Firefox right now. Okay, what's left in the deck? Uh, you're right, not a lot, but they don't know that. <laughs> yeah, that might not have been a good install. So anything that they draw is an agenda jams in remote server. With the Costa, they'll score it in a couple turns. Now they have huge. We have huge problems here. We probably buy a band's archives to draw too. As frustrating as Lat not firing has been, Atea hasn't fired yet either. Atea has fired like two or three times because Atea fired on all the Vovos. Not a lot, but like it saves a lot more money because you actually save a lot of install credits. Clickless buy events is kind of good. Uh, I was hoping they're for a telework. We still have, I should just keep my head somewhere else. They're not building another remote server. It says limit one, right? Uh, we still have a bunch of teleworks in the deck. So we'll find one off of this. Okay, slow down there. Do you think we can get live draw this turn? Oh, she does really good. At least we can get HQ pressure, but they're going to ice up other stuff. 
the Lacosta was paid three to get an advancement on the NGO front, which is technically worth it, right? Because the advancement is worth five credits. But not a click. That's kind of cool. So they drew through game three. We are going to struggle to deal with the cone gen. Mindscaping, good. Here they should just jam anything to the remote server. The problem is like Ika and Nancy remote server is kind of tricky. How do we, I think we just click one run HQ. Hope cone gen doesn't cost us the game. We can always check this. We should. Adrian, okay. Guess right on Kongen. Yeah, I know. That's what we have to do. I think here they can score out another 5-3 and we're happy. So we're just going to set up for next turn. If we have in hand another Hannah, we actually can like buy a band's R&D. In terms of the overclocks, we have one more in the bin. So I think here we can nuke a Telework, Telework. Into the Depths is really good as well. Oh, it might be right to pinhole. You can break the ice, Konja chooses, right? We can, yeah. But if it's like a sentry, it's really expensive and difficult because we have to move the eco over. It's 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 like kind of rough. Uh, but they would probably pick the surveyor or the Anansi. Eco deals with surveyor pretty well, I think. Okay, so we pinhole here, we slow them down a whole turn from scoring, but if they spend their whole turn scoring next turn, I think we're happy with it. And then we just kind of pop off. So I think we're just gonna do telework, telework, creative, and then hopefully with 22 credits, right? Like, what can't we do? I don't think we need to buy a bands for the last Hannah. There's one more Hannah, right? No, there's not. Okay, so we're not playing by bands. Wait, you can do that? Do what? Because Conchin allows you to encounter an ice. It doesn't force a subroutine. So you can always just break an ice you're encountering. It's not like uh yeah, it, it's different than the band grid Nanacidic, which is just like fire subroutines. Or Zeto, right? What well, can't we do? It would be great last words. I don't think I said hi, guy. So here we just start by running HQ. We could into the depths. Um, huh? yeah. Pinhole is worth a clickless run next turn. Yeah, the pinhole or the into the depths. So either way, it's fine. We have... Ooh, just make it stop. That's probably a surveyor. I need you to not do that. The cool thing about Anansi too is, well, we want to break all the subroutines. Hey, dude, always a pleasure when I get to catch up live. Hey, I appreciate it. Tuesday night streams are good or Tuesday afternoon streams. Okay, we're going to try and win this turn. Let's go. It's a Kojin. So Kojin, no subroutines, no ice type. So it's just going to happen. Whenever the runner encounters his ice, they secret spend 0, 1, or 2, reveal credits. If you and the runner spend different number of credits, that's usually how side games work, you may force the runner to counter another res piece of ice. So encounter means we can break. Ideally, here we just force them to spend money. I'm going to spend 2. They're going to spend 1. If I just say all 2 numbers, like we're usually correct. I think they're happy if we spend 2 anyways. It'll be cheaper than the break. Imagine spending two and then still having to counter the ice. Yeah, should have just thought about it. It's fine. So now we're going to counter a piece of ice. Threads. So the worst case, I think, is the surveyor. We can always just trace through the surveyor. It's the surveyor. Okay. So the surveyor, we're going to take the tags. So it's just trace six. So that's cheaper than breaking this. Otherwise, we have to move the eco around. We're going to avoid doing that. So trace six for two tags. I don't care. Lat has link. Hey, Lat feels really good now. And now they have to boost really hard into the trace. In theory, pay five, we're in. Steal Fuji. Palisade, pretty cool. Four strength barriers, not the worst spot to be in. Okay. Um. Now, if we enter the depths of this server, we have 14. That's not great. Lad has been a Kiko with three more influence this game. Yeah, <laughs> yeah Kiko has Link. Wait, really? Uh, so we get into the depths R&D. It's a bit risky. It's only one credit. On 14, can we break the server? We have to do two flickers. And then we have SMC. Oh, wait. We have three flickers here. I guess we don't flicker the gauss. It's unlikely to be worth the money. It saves us two credits. That's not worth a flicker. So we have into the depths on HQ. I think maybe we should have. I, I just wasn't sure that we'd get through the cone gen, but I think we should have done the math that we always get through the cone gen. Yeah, we should into the depths HQ. That's we would like to have the more credits here. I think that's a mistake. Now we have clicks to spare because we have two click gainers. 
and we only have to have two clicks at the end of the run. I think we will just simply into the depths and hope. They might be on border control. This might be a bio vault. I think we should just check that this is a bio vault before we like really go too hard. They could pop the spin doctor here if they wanted to. I think they will anyway. So we're just going to access this card to send a message. Okay, cool. We also could have trashed Adrian Sice and just ran the remote server. Let's not consider that. We're in a deep dive deck and we're just going to ignore everything else that's going on in the game for better or for worse. We also know it's not a virus, no surprise. So now we can probably just run it. I don't think we deep into the depths because we're not gonna need the credits after, I don't think, unless we somehow got through this and it costs us 10 credits, which this is one, this is four. So it's four, five, six, seven, eight. Holy shit, actually. Yeah, into the depths might've been important there. So we should just pop Hannah. That will put us on four clicks. It's a click to run this. So that leaves us two clicks left, right? We've already made a run of it. So we pop Hannah, we're on four clicks. We run this three clicks. So we actually can just telework once here. Or it might be better to do double deep dive. HQ to install Peach Sean could have been interesting. I think our Peach Sean's in the bin though. Yeah, so we can't. Because Into the Depths is only from the deck, unfortunately. Yeah. MEU is also a problem, but that's its own problem. I think this SMC is useless. I think we're just going into the depths. I think this has to connect. I think having another credit up front. If we don't have the credit up front and that makes a difference, it's not like we're going to deep dive anyways. Uh, big surveyor. Okay. That's cool. Um, They have one credit. So we have to figure out what to do with this. So ideally, and then Hannah spin, hoping to shuffle the top of R&D. Yeah, we could do that. Euler eats that. Yeah, I think we have to uh, Euler this. It doesn't eat it. <laughs> It breaks it for seven credits. Um, so we got to check what the math is. If we move Ika, that's two. It goes on the surveyor. Okay, welcome to another five-minute math turn. Okay, so ways that we can break this. We can go get our simul chip, trash the SMC to go get, uh, what's it called? Uh, uh, the Pilangi. Then we can simul chip to also reinstall the oiler. We'd have to have to do that first. We have to do the oiler first. Don't forget that. Matt, for five minutes, check out. Don't even. We've never done that one. <laughs> not, not even once. And then we rerun because we forgot. Um, okay, so we have to deal with the surveyor. It's nine strength. Okay, great. So otherwise, we can do a trace eight. At a minimum, we're paying eight credits. So it might be strictly better to trace through that. That drops us eight credits. Yeah, 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 dude. Um, that's a problem. If only we had hush. If we had hush, this would be disgusting. It would be disgusting if we had hush. We could hush the Konji, we hush the rhyme, we hush the surveyor. So here we could pay eight. The cheapest way we break this is eight credits on the trace, which is if they boost into it, which makes a trace nine, which means we can lat here. We know they can't score out next turn, so we can just like set up for the war that we're trying to fight. Ugh, if we had the into the depths on HQ, we'd be in a much better spot. Or just pay one credit off the Konji, am I right? Like that two credits we played, it probably would be strictly better to play zero or one because we paid extra to still pay extra. Uh, and it was unlikely that they could pay two considering they need to res something expensive here. But regardless, let's say that we just trace through that. We pay at worst case eight, maybe even seven, but I think they would boost one into it. So it's trace nine for the end of the run. Floating tags doesn't matter. Uh, they have mindscaping actually. <laughs> Holy shit, they have mindscaping. Uh, so we have to pay link eight. That leaves us on five credits. Tattoo bowl is three. Rhyme is one. That's going to be an issue. So that's a problem. Now, if we flicker the Gauss, Tattoo Bowl is one. So it's eight, nine. This is 10. That leaves us with three credits. We have to get the, through the teeny for three credits, which is not possible. We're so cooked. We're so cooked. What's happening? Like, this is the sort of Netrunner, anytime we play something like this, this is the sort of Netrunner which makes me think, wow, should we just play Turbine and everything? And the answer is usually yes. We don't have Slap Bendel. In theory, we have to only break one Atini subroutine. Yeah, we can let Atini fire for once. The problem is, like, if we're flickering Euler, it doesn't matter, right? Because we're flickering Euler, we break the subroutines. It's the strength that matters. But you're right, we can only break one Atini subroutine. They left the game. <laughs> <They're> <laughs> Take your damn turn faster. We maybe should have teleworked sooner there. That would put on 16. How do we break this thing? 
if we make it, uh, what's it called? A code gate that we flick with the Euler, we break this for seven. So that's cheaper. It's seven, flick with the Euler, install, we break for seven. Then we have to break Tattoo Bullet for eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. Yeah, we're short on the telework. We're literally short on the telework. Bank on one deep dive? I think it's just not possible. Like, if we bank on one deep dive, we should have teleworked sooner. I think if our plan is bank on one deep dive, we just float the tags here and we just do telework, telework, and next turn we go off. Because, like, at least our economy is ruined. I think we'd let this fire, right? I don't think there's a way around it, let alone, like, how long could this game possibly be? Uh, I think it fires. And if they mindscaping, we lose. Not because we die, but because we lose three deep dive. Um, but I don't think we get through this, right? Like, probably eight. And this is 9 to 11, 12. This is 13, 14, 15, 16. And then we still need two. Yeah, fires. Maybe this is a deck only to play a single laser pointer. Holy shit, laser pointer is actually really good. Because we can simul chip it. That's better than revolver. I kind of like that. Lamau? Well, it's not wrong. So we can base seven here. That drops us again to six. This is potentially one. This is two. And this is four. Wait, we can get in now. Did they goof? Because if we pay seven here, it leaves us on 13 minus seven is six. That we flicker the gauss. Oh, fuck. We can't flicker two of them. Simul chip. You can't flicker two of them. So we have to like over install the gauss on top of the oiler, trashing the oiler, and then simul chip the oiler. So we pay seven, we're on six. We break this for one. We go into five. We break this for nothing. We go into four. We break this for four. Yeah, I think we can get through. They had to boost one here. Huh. Is that true? So we'll overinstall because you can do that. Imagine we win this. It's kind of hard. There's only like four agendas and 20 cards. And we only get one single one. They did have an ice in hand. Okay. Simul chip. Gauss. Or Euler. UI against Armin, sorry. Maybe they're saving money for double mindscaping. <laughs> Maybe. Maybe you get a sneak peek into what is playing on Saturday. Oh yeah. Imagine stealing an agenda here. They probably spend Doctor. Yeah. Yeah, right. This was not an observer. Oh fuck. Oh wait, 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 wait. Oh, we have into the depth. Charge a card? Can. Install program? Done. Oh, no. Wait, it shuffles. We don't care. Yeah, of course. Okay. Now they can add the agendas into HQ. But we get one deep dive. So in theory, all they should do is put all these back, but it's still shuffles. So like they can't do anything smart here, but besides destroy cards and add cards to HQ. Forgot to Hannah? Well, we still have a click left. But you're right, we forgot to Hannah there. It actually didn't matter if we handed or not, because we went on two agendas. I totally forgot about Hannah. You're not wrong about that. But at the end of the day, it doesn't matter. Uh, because either we win in a single deep dive, or if we Hannah, like we're going to win in the second deep dive anyways. So you're not wrong, but also... We don't have to, right? Because if we saw another agenda there, we would have just won. We're assuming there are only three pointers. We can still Hannah. Deep dive could whiff. Yeah, if it does, though, we can still Hannah, right? So what do they do with back to?
Because, wait, wait. Does Bact interact with the deep dive cards or the top of the deck? I don't actually know how that works. Need a click to hand it? We still have a click. Because deep dive says the core must set aside the top eight cards of R&D face up. So are those the cards that you touch with bacteria programming or did they draw unknown cards? So they're not on the top of R&D. So the bacteria actually hit seven different cards. Holy crap. Oh, that's a problem. Yeah, that tracks. The top eight are set aside. How many did you add to HQ? Yeah, so they actually saw unknown cards, which is a problem because we only saw one agenda. So if all the agendas were in there, we would have won because they can't bacterial and rip the cards out of the set aside. Nice. So they added two to hand. So we're assuming 3, 6, 9, 12, 15, which means we can look at nearly half the deck and we need to find a single agenda. I think we might as well Hannah here. Uh, but the problem is like we die to mindscaping unless we draw or we could win. Let's do the win button. GG. <laughs> Down to one credit. <laughs> That was a 12 turn game that took 44 minutes. Hey, thanks, you too. That was wild. Whew. I was so dead to mind. I was so dead to mindscaping. It was one credit off of the surveyor trace. If they spent one more credit, we were cooked. And like, obviously we're taking so long, so it's easy to, to miss that math up. Uh, but they had perfect information on what we're going to break with. So technically they could have done it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, we snuck that out again. We can make one run again. Credit perfect. Uh, the maths mattered. Uh, if we had the, what's it called? If we paid one on Kojin, which I think, you know, I said two numbers, so I don't look that silly, but we should have paid one on Kojin, I think for sure, because they can't really pay two. Um, and then it's like the, that's the thing. Painting two on Kojin is the worst, because if you whiff, you pay two. Maybe that's why they want to pay two. I don't know. Probably not. They couldn't spend a lot of money. Side games are not full random. It actually mattered about the credit pool. Hey, you too. Sorry about the long turns. Cheers. Uh, but we finally got there, which is really, really sick. Okay, Lat sucked. Uh, Lat was really bad. I think Arasana would have been slightly better. Uh, obviously, we were playing an Ika and a Lat deck, which you shouldn't. I wonder if we play Turbine in this. I do think to some extent, like, no joke, playing uh, Talut might have made more sense than Lat. Because I think every turn that we're contesting, we were genuinely reinstalling our breakers. The whole, like, simul chip flicker thing is also really clever. That You have to order that right. Because the clauses on simul chip are both restrictive and freeing. That was fire, Lamau. <laughs> yeah, tell me about it. We missed Lat on one turn that we, we could have probably played around it, but that's that. I think this deck probably needs more exploring. The fact that like all the things work is pretty good. Obviously, this is the same thing that's like kind of a bummer. Is that like last Tuesday we played a new archetype and had a lot of fun with it, but then on the channel we generally play depth, uh breath, then we do more depth. So we don't have the time really to tinker on it. But if somebody changes the cards and gets some an update to it, definitely let me know because I think that's actually quite an interesting and fun archetype. I probably would play Arasana over Lat because I think it's a bit more aggressive, a bit more fun. Lat's Link was the whole game. Yeah, actually, Lat's Link was super important. We use Lat's Link twice. Do you know what also has Link on it? Do you know how much money Cyber Trooper Talud would have saved us? Two traces. Two traces and all the strength boosts we needed. It would have been amazing. We would have been seven turns sooner. On that note, that's going to be it for the stream today. Again, we put out a video yesterday. Oh, wait, hold on, hold on. I should, don't do that. Uh, there's news, really big news at the top real quickly. Firstly, uh, if I mentioned this earlier, if you want to get Adam Doyle stuff, you want to get some Netrunner player in your life who likes Adam Doyle art, which is most of them. Uh, there's some really good art uh, Adam added onto the Inked Gaming. So Slap Vandal, Vig, and Nanook. I think Nanook's my favorite of three. It's really good. You've been off playing Dao with 45 cards. Uh, that would have been sick there, that's for sure. Uh, it would have actually been really, really cool. I think the other, other news stuff is they announced the circuit opener. Um, as of, Oh, and Accelerator Meta Test, Crawler announced. This is on December 17th at 9 a.m., whatever AWST is. Um, I unfortunately won't be around. I should either cast or play in one of these AMTs sooner than later, but I will be traveling for the holidays then, but check that out. You have a lot of time. This, I think, is like the most amount of time we've had before an AMT was announced in a while, so that's pretty sick if you want to plan around that. And finally, they've announced the circuit opener kit. 
Uh, we have that big old Enigma art. That is an art that's been around for a while, but I guess that's how playmats work. We have an altered of prepaid voice pad, which is interesting because that is a card that inherently is going to rotate in a year. To me, that's strange. Maybe these were commissioned before that announcement was decided on. And then Tattoo Bola, which is a really nice full art to get. Uh, but yeah, that's really strange why that gets an art on that. Important news that I'll share on socials later. Michael, now you have a hostage audience. You better be typing quickly. Oh, that's Cat's Cradle. I said it was Enigma. It's Cat's Cradle. Right, because it's Enigma in a Cat's Cradle. Wait, that slaps. That actually, I do like the Cat's Cradle art a lot, as much as you don't see the card that much more. I totally forgot about that. Yeah, it's an Enigma in the middle. That's kind of the joke. But yeah, it's a Cat's Cradle. Thanks, Mondi. Um, Yeah. Uh, we'll probably be ordering one of these. Mind you, we have an event. This is really important in Montreal on Saturday. If you want to dive in, it is, I think our last CEO of the year. I think there's going to be a fair few players there, which is really exciting. I know we have some friends coming up from the States. I don't know if anyone from Ontario is coming in for that, but, uh, that's gonna be really, really exciting. Kevin will open the store to regions not currently served by it. So people can order the CEO. Oh, sick. So what Michael is saying is that Kevin Tame, uh, the VP of, I think, product is what it's called, will be opening the store to regions that are not currently served by people. So people outside of whatever regions the store offers should be able to uh, buy a circuit opener kit, which is sick because currently I don't know what regions it serves, but it's probably not all of them. So stay tuned. If you're in an area, you're watching this and you normally aren't able to get these, um, they come pretty soon. I think the shipping on them is relatively good too. Uh, I think NSG used to pay for shipping. That reminds me when FFG made promos for banned cards for IL-5R. Sometimes that happens. That unfortunately does sometimes happen. Country? Okay. Well, apparently there'll be more regions soon. I'm not sure how that works. It's been a while since I've ordered. Uh, I don't think I've ordered through the NSG shop since. Because generally we do group orders. Um, but the NSG shop for Canada shipping over the last year has been really good. Okay. Uh, that's it. Again, we'll be back in... A couple days. Uh, we'll hopefully have another video next weekend, whether it's a deep dive or our readdressing of the tier list. That's mostly it. Free shipping on the CO kits. That's what I thought, Jeff. Thanks for confirming. Also, Jeff, I sleeved up the punitives and stuff from Worlds, and yeah, <laughs> Ooh, I'm <laughs> I'm card backing those ones for sure. I I, I see what the problem is. Unfortunately, uh, I have no doubt that bridge will be crossed at some point soon. And with that note, thanks so much for hanging out. If you're watching the VOD, if you want to like the video, that helps a lot with the channel growing. And I think that's really it. There's a lot of good networker content out there. Go check some stuff. We recommended a lot of stuff. So once you've done this. There's a lot more you can be watching. So enjoy that. And I don't mean just this channel. I hope that's obvious. Thanks again for hanging out. Hopefully you have a good rest of the week. Take care, y'all.